County Commission meeting. This conference will now be recorded. So my, is mine recording even though it shows red? Okay, all right. So we'll go ahead and welcome to the Lander County Commission meeting, Town Board of Battle Mountain and Austin Board of uh, County Highway Commission for August 27th, 2020. On the, on the line we have Judy Allen, Ted Herrera, and Brian Sparks. So we'll go ahead and call this to order. Would you like to um, please have paid for, please? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and have a moment of silence. forward right. right. Lander County Commission may break for lunch from 12 p.m. to 1 15 p.m. any agenda item may be taken out of order and may be combined for consideration by the public body and, and items may be pulled or removed from the agenda at any time so Commission reports on meetings conferences and seminars attended Patsy Thank you. Uh, just a couple quick ones. The Kingston Town Board did meet, um, and uh, actually that was the first time they met in person. Um, of course, they were restricted on the number of people, but they never have you know, more than half a dozen people that attend along with them anyway, so that went fine. Um, the tough part this year for them, of course, was the fact they couldn't have the fundraiser and the picnic for the... Uh, the firefighters and so they are doing the raffle and if anybody needs tickets they can still call Kingston and work out the tickets to uh, to that that will be handled on the September I believe it's 14th the, a phone number? I'm sorry a phone number um, I can get the phone number for you absolutely because we we have it's the regular water department at, in Kingston and um, then that was on the 20th. And on the 25th, uh, Nevada Energy uh, folks came out to talk with us. And this is the information I gave you last time. They had spoken to NACO about their, uh, their new transmission lines um, for all of their energy efficient uh, vision and uh, the, the uh, carbon footprint reduction as such. And they uh, actually started coming out in person. They met with our county manager and our public works and myself in Austin because we will be one of the first transmission lines going through from Ely to Urington. But they, they actually are going through 11 counties that will be affected. And so they're making personal visits. It was the CEO, the president of Nevada Energy, the business development and community vice president and the vice president of the transmission development. And I, I thought that was interesting. They were coming out. They also said they were going to be talking to uh, the Fallon Naval Air Station. Um, so they are, are doing all their, their uh, pre-footwork here. They said they probably won't have the lines coming through until about the 2023-2024. But as soon as all the approvals are coming through, uh, they will be starting um, to actually do their pre-work next spring. So, and then our NACO meets tomorrow. That's all I have. Art? No, no meetings. All right. Um, I did not have any meetings. Uh, Judy, did you attend any meetings? I did not. Okay, thank you. Brian? <laughs> all right, very good. Moving on. Staff reports on meeting conferences and seminars attended. Bert Ramos for the record. Um, so I wanted to give you guys an update on the Austin employee like I told you I would. Um, it's $101,313.67 total for that that we approved at the last meeting. I said I'd come back with the, with the solid numbers to complete that. Um, and then right now we have 59 active uh, total cases, 6 active cases of COVID and 52 recovered. A couple of them sick should be coming off the list. They were on the list from the last time. So if 
today's update should show that number of active coming down. Um, but that's where we stand on COVID, and that's all I have. All right, okay. So public comment. For non-agendized items only, persons are invited to submit comments in writing and or attend and make comments on any non-agendized items at the board meeting, if any, and dis um, discussion of those comments at the discretion of the board. All public comment may be limited to three minutes per person, again, at the discretion of the board. Reasonable restrictions may be placed on public comment based upon time, place, and manner, but public comment based upon viewpoint may not be restricted. Do we have any public comment? All right. Muted. Unmuted. All right. So moving forward on consent agenda items. All matters listed under consent agendas are con um, considered routine and may be acted upon by the board of county commissioners with one action without extension discussion. Any member of the board or any citizen may request that an item be taken from the consent agenda discussed and acted upon separately during the meeting. Consent agenda materials are available at the Lander County Clerk's Office for viewing and copies are available for a nominal charge. So number one, approval of August 27, 2020 agenda notice. Number two, approval of May 7, 2020 special budget workshop meeting minutes. Number three, approval of May 14, 2020 meeting minutes. Number four, approval of May 19, 2020 special budget workshop meeting minutes. Number five, approval of May 21, 2020 meeting minutes. Number six, approval of July 23rd, 2020 meeting minutes. Number seven, approval of August 13th, 2020 meeting minutes. Number eight, appro approval of payroll change requests. I didn't receive any minutes. Does anybody get minutes? No. Okay. Uh, with that, then we'll take the minutes out. That leaves us uh, number one and number eight, agenda and payroll. And I make a motion we approve those. Second. made the motion art seconded all in favor aye. 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 aye all right very good moving on um for possible action to approve or disapprove the payment of bills so do you have the check number for um, point s if nobody has uh any questions on the bills i will pull out two of them um, which are to point S, um, which uh, Brian likes to recuse himself on. So I make a motion we approve all of the bills except check number 208835 and 208749. All right, second. Second. All right, so Pastor made the motion. Art second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Brian votes aye. All right. So and I now make a motion that we approve check number 208835 and 208.749. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Uh, I um, abstain from this. All right. Very good. Moving forward. So for possible action to approve, disapprove, appointment of Manuel Marino for the Lander County Convention and Tourism Board, term lasting from July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2020. No. Hello. Um, excuse me, you need to turn on. Thank you, and welcome. <laughs> Mangle Mano Jr. for the record. Um, was, Paul Tamara and Rich Ripley came to ask me if I wanted to join the Leonard County Convention and Tourism Board. And I would love to do that just because I uh, find myself as a small town person. Uh, born in Elko, raised in Battle Mountain, lived in Austin, lived back in Battle Mountain. So. Um, yeah, just I know it's been a rough year with this whole COVID thing and everything, but hopefully I can bring some good ideas and um, good things for our small little towns to bring people to come visit us. That's it. All right. Thank you. I'll make a motion that we appoint Manny Marino to the Lander County Convention Tourism Board, lasting from July 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2022. Thank you for stepping up. It's so great to see kids that went through Live here, oh. went through the school system, stepping out. Thank you very much. Thank you guys for giving me the time. Thank you. Second. I'll second that and also um, note that this is for the at-large position. Yes. And thank you for stepping forward. All right. So 
So Art made the motion. Pass the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So moving on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you, man. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Judy, are you there? Hello. Yes. Are you are you voting or not voting? Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll vote. I just have you on mute, so. All right. So. Um, yeah, I'll be voting. All right. All right. So you're in favor of Manny? Yes. Yes. Very good. Thank you. All right. Moving on. For possible action to approve, disapprove the request from the Fallon Naval Air Station to use apron space, at least fueling and hangar space for the dates of August 31st, 2020 through September 4th, 2020 at the Battle Mountain Airport. Oh. Nice to see you again. <laughs> all right, well, you turn on that right in the front. There's a little button if you can hit that so we can all hear you. Green means go. Excellent. I will I sometimes have a problem with projecting my voice, so I, I got to <laughs> find the, the sweet spot here. Um, uh, I'll introduce myself first. Uh, Rob Rule, Naval Air Station Fallon. Uh, I'm the community plans and liaison officer uh, for the base. I work for the commanding officer. Uh, my basic duty is to make sure that we are uh, having uh, good communication with uh, communities around uh, Naval Air Station Fallon, which includes you guys as well as our airspace extends all the way to Elko and Eureka. Um, uh, um, and um, for, today's, um, uh, for today's item, uh, agenda item, um, um, the, we're coming before the commission to make sure that uh, you folks understand and are aware um, we had a request to um, use the uh, Battle Mountain Airport uh, for um, a couple days here at the end of the month in the beginning of September. Um, basically, it would be used uh, for ramp space, some refueling, and then use of the of the county uh, provided hang hangers there um, at the uh, at the airport. Um, uh, we had used it back March time frame. We had just come up and 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 uh, and. Uh, made that request and and so it, it, it was just kind of like a an initial like hey maybe this will work out maybe it won't for for the, for the navy side um and then it, it was very successful so we had said uh well next time we come up we'll we'll do a little bit more of a formal presentation and, and, and talk to the commission just about that um uh, what i'm going to do is um hand it over to uh, Lieutenant Ogden here, he's going to just kind of go over generally the stuff I have no clue about, uh, about what they're going to do and what they're going to use it for, uh, generally more the, 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 uh, um, the military training value side. Uh, but again, we just wanted to make sure that we were coming up and, and being transparent as possible. So, Lieutenant. Good morning. My name is Lieutenant Alec Ogden. I am a helicopter pilot and weapons and tactics instructor down at NAS Fallon. Um, ultimately, our objectives for this detachment up to uh, Battle Mountain uh, is we're looking to uh, put a three aircraft detachment of MH-60 Cirrus, so those are Black Hawk variant helicopters, um, and we're going to dislocate them from NAS Fallon where they have uh, all of their support established. They'll be coming up here. Uh, the expected uh, time frame is they will arrive on Monday of next week. Um, and they will be conducting operations uh, from Battle Mountain down onto the Fallon Range Training Complex uh, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And Thursday evening, they will be returning to NAS Fallon. Uh, Friday morning, the ground uh, support personnel for the detachment will be packing up uh, and returning to, uh, to NAS Fallon. Um, and I apologize, those ground support personnel uh, will be arriving uh, or we're expecting to, them to arrive uh, on Monday. Um, ultimately, as far as operations go, uh, we're expecting uh, two operations per day. So there will be two MH-60 Sierras uh, departing and returning uh, two times a day. So those operations uh, are going to occur. One will be uh, in the afternoon, and then one will be in the evening. Um, I believe the, uh, uh, the times of operations are in the, uh, the concept of operations uh, uh, document that uh, uh, that we have. If you don't have a copy, I can uh, I can provide one. But um, the uh, uh, like I said, afternoon uh, and early evening. Our uh, uh, 
the purpose for, or the reason why that we're uh, looking to conduct detachments with uh, squadrons that are coming through uh, NAS Fallon uh, is that uh, as we look to kind of future fights that we're expecting or future engagements that we're expecting to, uh, uh, to have to fight uh, against uh, near peer competitors, one of the things that we're looking at is uh, uh, dislocating aircraft or uh, distributing aircraft away from uh, what we consider common operating places. So for us, that would be uh, Navy ships as well as uh, uh, military air bases. So we think uh, based on the geography of the range uh, or the gun range train complex, uh, Battle Mountain is a, a uniquely uh, uh, uniquely or unique location um, that has the appropriate amount of support, uh, but also provides what we would consider a uh, austere operating environment in the sense that we do not have all the facilities, we don't have all the equipment, uh, we don't have all the, the support that we do have at NAS Fallon. So forcing squadrons to figure out how to conduct operations in that sort of environment is something that we see valuable going into the future. Well, it's nice to know you hear those kinds of things. Why did we get called last time? <laughs> 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 Wanted to know why we were the helicopters before. Yeah. So, yeah. This, is, yeah. this is the same type procedure that exercise that you guys were doing last time? Yes, sir. It'll be identical. Yeah. Uh, um, Lieutenant, do you want to briefly talk about, you know, some, like, uh, like kind of the purpose for this training? Um, like, when you come out, what the value would be? Just basically go over what, a, like, a, the value of a, com a combat search and rescue would be for a squadron. Yeah, absolutely. So the mission sets that the squadrons will be conducting um, are going to be a combination of special operations support uh, as well as combat search and rescue. So um, you do, don't see it up here in Battle Mountain, but uh, when we do conduct air wing Fallon exercises, um, the entire FRTC uh, is utilized. So we'll have a uh, fixed wing uh, that operate uh, to the southeast of us, um, and typically the fight progresses uh, from east to west. So. The furthest eastern portion of the FRTC is utilized, um, and uh, as well as all the way out to the west. So uh, it's a large uh, air war that's fought, uh, primarily for helicopters. The uh, way that we integrate to that air war is we operate underneath it. So um, while all of our blue fighters are providing uh, uh, air to suppression, as well as potentially suppression of enemy air defenses, um, we are in position, or we try to position ourselves so that we're able to recover any aviators that are, uh, are down during the event. Um, as part of our training scenarios, we'll have uh, several scenarios where uh, aviators are shot down, um, and then we're, uh, we force the squadrons to conduct a uh, combat search and rescue mission to go recover those aviators. Um, that's going to be primarily the bulk of, uh, uh, of our training evolutions uh, out of Battle Mountain. Uh, we will have one uh, soft support uh, or special operation forces uh, support mission uh, that's conducted, and that will also be down in the FRTC. Uh, very similar or similar to uh, combat search and rescue. However, instead of uh, searching and recovering a downed aviator, they'll be uh, inserting and extracting a uh, special reconnaissance element um, in the vicinity of, uh, uh, of Bravo 17, which is one of our ranges. So, so, God bless you for what you do, and thanks for defending our country. And uh, best of luck. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and, and there's value to. Um, uh, Lieutenant had talked about the uh, the regular the jet aircraft, the fixed wing aircraft, uh, flying around. So when they, they conduct the, the large force exercise and they do whatever they need to do, um, at the end of that exercise, prior to the helos being engaged, um, they'll have uh, they'll um, those folks will be walking into a briefing room to talk about what had occurred on there. What they do is they just grab an aviator by the scruff of their neck, and he or she is then immediately has to leave, they take him in a truck, they take him up into Dixie Valley, and they push him out the back. And they said, <laughs> you, you were just shot down. So, um, so, so not only do these guys have their training value of going out and making sure that they can find the downed aviator, that downed aviator has now got to avoid enemy, uh, the pretend enemy forces searching for them. So uh, it's, it's a very integrated piece. And then um, that aviator comes back and he or she presents back to all of their fixed wing uh, folks and talks about their experience. So um, it, it's a real world part. It's good for the Hilo folks. It's good for the for the fixed wing folks. And then kind of everything that the Navy does is kind of briefed out at the end. So like you, you know, like you, you usually get a test when you're in school and you you really don't get any feedback. The kind of the Navy piece is that they spend a, as as much time um, talking about 
what had happened during the event than they do pre preparing for it. So um, that's all kind of that backside. So um, you know, it's the the, 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 the actions that occur at Fallon. It's all integrated operations. So everybody kind of meets and, and talks through that. So it, it's more than you know, you'll you'll see a couple of ELOs here flying in and out, but it's it, it's more uh, a part of that bigger operation. And then as soon as folks leave. Um, uh, the, the, the units here, the air wing, the squadrons from the air wing leave here, they'll go directly to the carrier. So everything that they're learning here is, is, is immediately going to be used. Um, so um, if, you know, uh, um, uh, an event is going on in Syria, um, the helicopters would fly into Syria, be pre-positioned. That would be much like it would be here in, in Battle Mountain. They would, you know, be there and isolated, can't have to camp for a couple of days. Be be there alone, and then if if one of the if an aircraft was shot down, that they would have to respond. So I mean, it's 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 more than just a you know, hey, we're we're just you know getting better. We're getting better to be immediately use that information. So um, I appreciate appreciate you guys uh, um, listening and and understanding kind of that side of it as well, because uh, it. it it's a, as Commissioner um, Clark had said, it, it, it kind of rounds out and it really becomes you know, part, of, part of the defense of the country. So, On this um, one, on the exercises here, though, you actually get to bump up our economy and stay in the motels and, and, and that type that of thing. We're in Austin. Oh, yeah. Oh, it gets the fuel because you're really, really ostracized out there, right? Yes. It is the thing. Yes, ma'am. Well, first of all, thank you again for your service, and thank you for coming in to give us the information this morning. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Lander County is, is thrilled to be able to, to help you with any of your training exercises because we, we wish you the very best. We know that's exactly why we're all here is to support you. So with that, I make a motion that we approve the apron space, refueling hangar space for the dates of August 31st through September 4th for the Fallon Naval Air Station at the Battle Mountain Airport. And I'll second that. And just a personal note out of Lander County. Sir, we have one of our kids that grew up here, and well, he moved to Fernley, but he's training for the Thunderbirds. Oh, he awesome. happens to be the sheriff's grandson. That's amazing. <laughs> and my daughter's on the USS Ronald Reagan, so. Okay. You know, yes, ma'am. So, you have support. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes, all right. Um, so, Patsy made the motion or second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Two other sheets. Aye. 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 All right. Very good. Thank you guys. Thank you for your service. Thank you. And thank you. And I think uh, I think uh, County Manager has, has my information. So, anything that's necessary that, that comes back through in terms of feedback, just let me know. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> All right, for possible action to approve disapprove resolution 2020-09 to grant money to the Battle Mountain High School Rodeo Club, a nonprofit organization pursuant to NRS 244.1505. Okay, these were all approved, so all we need is the approval of the resolution and reading right. that in. So I will tackle that and make a motion that we approve resolution number 2020-09 of the Board of Lander County Commissioners. The summary is a resolution to grant money to the Battle Mountain High School Rodeo Club, a nonprofit organization, pursuant to NRS 244.1505. Whereas a board of county commissioners may expend money for any purpose which will provide a substantial benefit to the inhabitants of the county or to a nonprofit organization created for religious, charitable, or educational purposes to be expended for the selected purpose pursuant to NRS 244.1505. And whereas pursuant to NRS 244.1505, Three, a grant to a nonprofit organization created for religious, charitable, or educational purposes must be made by resolution. And whereas it is the desire of the Lander County Board of Commissioners to grant the Battle Mountain High School Rodeo Club monies to help put on the rodeo school, the high school rodeo. And whereas the Battle Mountain High School Rodeo Club is deemed a nonprofit organization pursuant to NRS 372.3261. 
an organization created for educational purposes to provide athletic, cultural, or social activities for children. And whereas the Battle Mountain High School Rodeo Club will be given a grant and an amount not to exceed $10,000. And whereas the Battle Mountain High School Rodeo Club will submit invoices with backup explanation for each bill to the finance department, the invoices will then be processed for payment. Grants shall not be used for personal, i.e. example, wages, benefits, etc., and so forth. And whereas the Lander County Board of Commissioners further conditions the grant on the Battle Mountain High School Rodeo Club following the coronavirus policy and guidelines as adopted and set by this board. Now therefore be it resolved that the Lander County Board of Commissioners do hereby grant the Battle Mountain High School Rodeo Club an amount not to exceed $10,000 with the above stated conditions passed and adopted this 27th day of August 2020 and authorize the chair to sign. All right, for a second. Second. Passing in the motion, Art second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Judy, both sides. All right, very good. to write Judy and, and Brian's name on this resolution so their names are on it. We have three for a quorum, but they voted aye. So I, what do you do? So um, Brian and Judy, we have a question. On the resolution for signatures, are, are you? do you guys want to come in and sign it, or do can we put that you approved? Um, Madam Chair, yes. it's just noted who signs aye. We don't personally sign it. Oh, okay. So they're oh, all covered. Okay, never mind. Okay. All right. Questions answered. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. All right. No. All right. Moving on for possible action to approve disapprove resolution 2020-10 to grant money to the Battle Mountain Junior um, Rodeo Association, a nonprofit organization pursuant to NRS 244.1505. Okay, since we have approved that, I will make a motion. We approve resolution number 2020-10 at the Board of Lander County Commissioners. The summary is a resolution to grant money to the Battle Mountain Junior Rodeo Association, a nonprofit organization pursuant to NRS 244.1505. Whereas a Board of County Commissioners may expend money for any purpose which will provide a substantial benefit to the inhabitants of the county, or to a nonprofit organization created for religious, charitable, or educational purposes to be expended for the selected purpose pursuant to NRS 244.1505, and whereas pursuant to NRS 244.1503, a grant to a nonprofit organization created for religious, charitable, or educational purposes must be made by resolutions and whereas it is the desire of the Lander County Board of Commissioners to grant the Battle Mountain Junior Rodeo Association monies to help put on the Buster Miller Memorial Junior Rodeo and whereas the Battle Mountain High School Rodeo Club is deemed a nonprofit organization pursuant to NRS 372.3261 an organization created for educational purposes to provide athletic, cultural, or social activities for children. And whereas the Battle Mountain Junior Rodeo Association will be given a grant in an amount not to exceed $5,000. And whereas the Battle Mountain Junior Rodeo Association will submit invoices with backup explanation for each bill to the finance department, the invoices will then be processed for payment. Grants shall not be used for personal, i.e. example, wages, benefits, etc., and so forth. And whereas the Lander County Board of Commissioners further conditions the grant on the Battle Mountain Junior Rodeo Association following the coronavirus policy and guidelines as adopted and set forth by this board. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Lander County Board of Commissioners do hereby grant the Battle Mountain Junior Rodeo Association an amount not to exceed $5,000 with the above stated conditions. 
passed and adopted this 27th day of August 2020, and authorize the chair to sign. All right, do I have a second? I'll second. All right, so Patsy made the motion for seconding. All in favor? Aye. 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 Judy votes aye. All right, very good, thank you. For possible action to approve, disapprove resolution 20. 2011 to grant monies to the Battle Mountain Burners Car Club, a nonprofit organization pursuant to NRS 24415.1505. All right. Take it away, Patsy. Okay, three's the charm or three strikes you're out. I'm not sure how that works today. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. I make a motion. We approve resolution number 2020-11 of the Board of Lander County Commissioners. Summary, a resolution to grant money to the Battle Mountain Burners Car Club, a nonprofit organization pursuant to NRS 244.1505. Whereas the Board of County Commissioners may expend money for any purpose which will provide a substantial benefit to the inhabitants of the county or to a nonprofit organization created for religious, charitable, or educational purposes to be expended for this elected purpose pursuant to NRS 244.1505 and, whereas pursuant to NRS 244.1505-3, a grant to a nonprofit organization created for religious, charitable, or educational purposes must be made by resolutions, and whereas it is the desire of the Lander County Board of Commissioners to grant the Battle Mountain Burners Car Club monies to help put on the annual car show, and whereas the Battle Mountain Burners Car Club is deemed a nonprofit organization pursuant to NRS 372.3261, an organization created for charitable purposes to advance a public purpose, donate or render gratuitously or at a reduced rate a substantial portion of its services to, and whereas the Battle Mountain Burners Car Club will be given a grant in an amount not to exceed $2,000, and whereas the Battle Mountain Burners Car Club will submit invoices with backup explanation for each bill to the Finance Department, the invoices would then be processed for payment. Grants shall not be used for personal, i.e. wages, benefits, and so forth. Whereas the Lander County Board of Commissioners further conditions the grant on the Battle Mountain Burners Car Club following the coronavirus policy and guidelines as adopted and set by this board. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Lander County Board of Commissioners do hereby grant the Battle Mountain Burners Car Club an amount not to exceed $2,000 with the above stated conditions. Passed and adopted this 27th day of August 2020 and authorize the chair to sign. All right, do I have a second? Second. Second. All right. Uh, uh, Pass, we made the motion. Art seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Brian votes what? Aye. Okay. Judy. I voted aye. All right, thank you. All right, moving on. For possible action to approve, disapprove a five year capital improvements plan for future projects with the um, goal being to ratify the plan by resolution on September tenth, twenty twenty at the regular regularly scheduled Lander County Commission meeting. Program is for the record. So I believe you guys have in your backup um, where we have moved some money around to reallocate it. Now, my understanding is this is what we are setting aside, but we have not actually um, approved all of these yet and for actually going out to bid or building or anything like that, right? Nope, it's a it's a five-year plan, so it's just a, a projected plan of what we okay. intend to do. We are, we are, we are setting this and, and um, putting it down of what each amount is going for, right? Correct. Okay, got it. So does this whole thing need to be ready? No? No. no. Okay, all right. Well, I'll make a motion that we approve the five-year capital improvement plan for future projects with the goal being to ratify the plan by resolution on September 10th, 2020 at a regularly scheduled Lander County Commissioner's meeting. All right, do I have a second? I'll second. I'll second that motion. Okay. All right, 
So we're going to have a motion by R and seconded by Brian. All in favor? Aye. 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 Judy? Nay. All right. Okay. Moving forward for possible action to approve, disapprove the renewal of the Battle Mountain Airport hangar lease between Four Corners Real Estate and Lambert County. We have to call the gentleman in. This is for the EMS, right? I believe so. The name of the gentleman we're calling in. It is Chris? Chris? Yes, they are our, the air ambulance, yes. Okay, that's I think that was the clarification we wanted last time. Brian asked for it, right? Yeah. I think so. This is Chris. Chris, how are you? This is uh, Bert with Lander County. I have you on speaker here at the Lander County Commission meeting. I'm going to transfer him to the bridge. Hi. How We're, are you guys? Good. We're going to transfer you over one second. Thank you. Your entry is not valid. Okay, Chris, do you have us? I do. I got you guys. Thank you very much for reaching out. All righty, Chris. I believe the commission is just looking for uh, clarification on what exactly you guys do with the hangar and uh, and move forward from there. There was a question whether they subleased. I think was the question last time. So what happens is we're in the air ambulance business. Uh, we started back in Blanding, Utah, Southeast Utah, thirty plus years ago, and the company's grown. In 2017, we sold most of the company, but we, ha we held on to a lot of the real estate, um, including Battle Mountain Hangar, which we had invested in, obviously, and built that little small hangar there. The, the, the company right now that's using the hangar for air ambulance, and that's what it's used for, um, on occasion is Medex Air One. Um, we have a relationship still because we still run Puerto Rico with a company called Classic. Classic, real, uh, Classic Air is also a uh, um, kind of a, a sister to us. And so um, we are, they are using that hangar for that area right now, Classic, who we don't really have a formal Sub lease with. Oh, I don't remember if we have anything to write with them yet, but yes, that's that's what you know right now is classic with Medex Air One. So my question is: is why are we leasing to you when I mean, you're subleasing? Why don't we just lease directly to our air ambulance? Well, they don't own the hangar, so we own we own it. We do a long lease with you guys, and so at some point after our non-competes over, we may want to be back in there ourselves um, with, our, with another company. So um, we're fostering our relationship with Classic, um, and they're using it right now as far as storing planes there. So that was my original question on this was, guys, was the $360 per year was an awful, it was awfully cheap for somebody else who's making a profit off that. So that, that was one reason why I wanted to look at it and have the discussion. So then what it's often in, in these small communities like yours that we don't pay any land rent. They, they like the activity of the airport. The activity and the, and the operations in and out of there increase their funding. And so, um, like in Gallup, we had years of free, free land rent because, and we're even to this day, very, very low land rent because they want the activity and encouraging the activity and operations at the airport. Obviously, um, when we make an investment, and a hanger and put it up and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, we're, we're hoping to receive something back on that. 
and we you don't get a lot, but um, it's enough to pay insurance and utilities and taxes, you know, how that goes. So, Ted, are you on? Are you on? Yes. Um, so, do we just need to amend this contract so they can sublease, or what are your recommendations? Because in the contract, it, I believe it clearly states that there's no subleasing. That's correct. So, if you sign the contract as is, then they they must follow. The uh, the contract. If, so if if they plan on subleasing, we could probably change the uh, the words in that contract to allow. It. Otherwise, we could have to send them a letter that says they're violating the lease. I understand. I didn't realize that that we are breaking the agreement. To be honest with you. It's been kind of we've been in for so long. It's just kind of how, just kind of how it's been. You know what I mean? We're not trying to speak sneaky about anything. If you know how that goes. So we're if we're outside of formal, if we're outside of formal agreements, and you want to formalize exactly what's happening, we're glad to jump through whatever hoops we need to. So do we want to bring this back with a corrected contract? Or maybe we could just take item number seven out of this lease and move forward with it as is. I believe that seven is the is the one that directly relates to subleasing. Okay. Uh, I mean the item okay. Right. So what's everybody else think? Fine. We we can if you guys wanted to approve this and then we can represent it at the next meeting with uh, with the amendment of seven being removed so they they can sublease it's theirs to do as they choose with at that point. Um, you can also fine. make the motion that they do that and just move it on. It doesn't have to come back before us if we approve the motion with that. Perfect. Okay. So you want to go ahead and make the motion. Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve the renewal of the Battle Mountain Airport hangar lease between Four Corners Real Estate and Lander County and um, amend it uh, so that they can subcontract with the air ambulance. Second. Okay. So the motion was made by Patsy, second by our, all in favor. Just, Aye. just a Aye. minute, just a minute. We Aye. need a clarification. Huh? Maybe, maybe we just need to take the subleasing clause out of the agreement. That, that way they can do business with who they... Well, but if they're doing business change. with other people, then it's Brian's concern that why should other people get to sublease? So I did make it specific. She's making it specific so it's only county. If that's okay with everyone. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm following you. Yes. Is that okay? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. No. Second. All right. All in favor? If that changes ever, I can, we can come back to you guys and say, hey, we want it. It's always been used for air ambulance, and so when we've, when we've had someone, something in the area, that's what's in and out of there. I can barely understand him. Do you, have, you understand the only one you can sublease to or air ambulance? Apparently, her motion, that's what she's saying, and that's yeah. okay with us for right now. It, it, obviously, we would like the flexibility if something happened or changed, but for a short period of time, but um, if, if that's the appetite of the commission, then we'll support it. This is Ted Rimmer. Usually there's a clause that includes looks to the fact that if they wish to sublease to any other party, they would have to get pre-approval uh, from, from the county. Do you want to step up that wording? Well, do you want to amend that? Not really. <laughs> I mean, if if they want to do that, they can come back before us, um, and we'll take a look at a different contract. But there's other things to be considered, I think. Okay. So for this one, we're doing what we've always done, and we've got the air ambulance taken care of, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, 
All right. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Judy Bell. Aye. Aye. All right. Very good. Thank you, commissioners. We appreciate it, and hopefully it will be a, a good thing for the airport. Thank you. Thank you. Meeting for possible action to approve, disapprove the Lander County Board of Commission to allow the Lander County Extension uh, budgeted fund to be used to hire a letter of appointment person to run the Lander Extension office until state budget cuts are removed and the extension educator can be hired. Hello. Hello. Holly Gatsky for the record. Good morning, Holly. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to bring forward this. Um, Item to you, um, our office is currently uh, empty uh, for cooperative extension in Lander County, and we want to work really hard to fill that and provide services back to the county. Um, with the uh, cuts at the state level, we are uh, kind of got our hands tied on how to do this. So we look back at the budget that you guys um, um, granted us, and what we've done is looked within that and asking if we could use county money to hire a temporary person to fill the office and a temporary assistant on county money since we don't have access to state funding due to cuts. And um, this would be to help us fill those positions, get things started, provide services back to the community uh, with a focus on community and youth. Um, that's kind of the feedback we've been getting from the community of what are the needs. Get 4-H programs going. Um, we've got programs statewide where we're trying to work with helping youth that are kind of falling into a gap with this situation right now. Um, and we've got a lot of other programming we'd like to bring to the community and help during these struggling times right now. Um, and so we're asking the commission if you're okay with us reallocating the budget that you already um, suggested for 2021. And, um, um, be good with us uh, hiring uh, an LOA, which is a temporary position, to run the office and bring in an admin assistant as well to help. Um, this is the way that we can figure out how to navigate forward, and hopefully in 2022 things will go back to normal. If there are still cuts, we may need to come back and talk to you about potentially working on a bit of the carryover funds that are in the extension account as well. But right now, we're living within the 2021 budget with what we're proposing. Any thoughts or questions? I, I did speak with Holly on this. And, and first of all, I, I sincerely appreciate you being creative and thinking outside the box. Because when, when we were actually ready to interview for our final educator and COVID hit and everything, you know, COVID hit and everything stopped, um, here we are with nobody at this point and and I think we really do need to 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 certainly staff this position and I think it's kind of a creative way to do that even though it's temporary um, with quotation marks um, when all this comes about so we can hire somebody permanent that person could certainly apply as they go through the proper procedures but the the bottom line is that we actually collect money from our citizens to staff this office, and and it's not there; it's vacant. So I think it's a fabulous idea. If nobody has any objection. Well, so at that point, are they considered a county employee? No, I think we'd be giving the money to the we'd be giving the money to the university, and then it would be there. We're funding it, but it would be a university employee. Okay. Correct. Correct. Yes. Ted, I have a question. The way the agenda is written, it just says about hiring a LOA. Were you talking about one or two positions, Holly? I was talking about um, two if possible. The LOA, of course, is the most important position. The way it's agendized, it only specifically talks about hiring an LOA, not an assistant. I have the assistant going under well, the salary category already. The assistant is already budgeted in the budget. They, it's my understanding they're just trying to reallocate the funds that they've already been budgeted for to allow them to hire a, uh, a letter of appointment person. But the, the staff's already been budgeted, it's my understanding. 
So we're Correct. approving yes. the educator, and then you can you have the authority to hire the other. Yes. Okay. Normally, the educator is hired with state funds and a, a bit of county, but we don't have the state funds. So right. we're trying to figure out how to rearrange things to make sure that we keep the process going. Yes. I think it's important for Lander County to have this. I'll make a motion that we approve land, <coughs> approve to allow Lander County Extension Budgets funds to be used to hire a letter of appointment person to run the Lander County Extension Office until state budget cuts are removed and the extension educator can be hired. I second that motion. Mark made the motion that the proxy seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Judy votes aye. All right, thank you. So just, just for the record, we are going to have to augment that budget. Um, I'll let Lake can speak on that. Um, it's my understanding that if we if we want to use the service and supply money for wages or benefits, then the budget will have to be augmented, which we can do that later on down the road. But just so you're aware, we might have to get together on that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Lake and Sullivan for the record. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh. Do you have a question? Come on. Please. Thank you. Uh, Jerry Annis with the uh, Conservation District. Uh, I'm your appointed uh, seat on the conservation, conservation District Board. And I didn't know that this was a, uh, uh, a subject item until I read your, read your uh, um, agenda. Um, but uh, I just wanted to throw out that uh, you may be aware that uh, the um, Conservation District is currently uh, advertising for a part-time um, executive secretary also. And there may be some potential for uh, synergy, working together uh, and uh, um, uh, pooling, our, pooling our resources to hire the, a person that could handle both jobs, so I would like to suggest or ask that at our next business meeting, which is September 8th, that uh, either maybe Brian Sparks, who I believe is still our representative uh, with your board, or, or Bert, we'd even invite Bert uh, to come to our meeting and, and have that discussion. Uh, you're, it's, always, it's actually, you're always welcome to do that because the 4-H person was actually your secretary for some time. We know that and still is. Well, she wasn't it the 4-H person. used to be, person. right. But um, it, it may take a while to hire her, so yeah, we can, can look forward and see. But we definitely well, want the coordination. Well, yeah, that's, sure. that's all I'm asking yeah. is, is the, for a discussion uh, of coordination because what is your budget? I should have asked that. To begin with, what is your budget for this position that you're discussing discussing now? I don't think we changed the budget from before. Do we know what it is for the for the conservation secretary you're talking the, about? No. We're, we're the budget that we're proposing is seventeen thousand four hundred ninety eight. It's a half time position. Right. right. So that's exactly what I'm getting at. If you had a more qualified person that was interested in making uh, doing the, working out of the same office as in the past. Uh, and making more than seventeen thousand dollars, we could we can uh, discuss and coordinate. Maybe we can help each other. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. If I may, commissioners, I'm, I rely on the director of extension for the state. I would propose that the conservation district work that out with cooperative extension, and we bring a proposal back to you guys because it has other impact on our budget. So I would suggest that we negotiate before we bring it back for presentation to the county commission. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Lyles. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. All right. Can we, take a break for 10 we absolutely can take a break for 10 minutes. <laughs> we're going to get All right, we're going to go ahead and this conference will now be recorded. Call the meeting back to order, please. All right, is everybody ready? <laughs> Brian, are you on the line? Yeah, I'm with you. Judy? Yes, I'm All still right. here. Ted, you are still too? Yes. All right, let's go ahead and move forward. 
All right. JUB Engineering discussion only regarding updates on FY 2020 Battle Mountain Apron Project and Austin Access Road and Taxi Line Project. Um, JUB asked to table this once again. They will be back here at the next meeting and hopefully be breaking ground at that time so they have something better to report on. All right, we're going to go ahead and table number 10. Then a, uh, moving on to number 11, A&M Engineering for possible action to approve, disapprove the appointment of Apron Martinez, excuse me, Aaron Martinez of A&M Engineering as engineering on record for the Austin Realignment Project in conjunction with Summit Engineering. Kyla Bright for the record. Um, I was contacted by Tom Gallagher. Um, the way this works, they are the engineer that will be doing the project, but they need an engineer to sign off on it. They can't sign off on their own maps. Um, so A&M Engineering stepped up and said that they would be they would be available to do that. It's kind of you can't review and approve your own. Okay. Your own work. So then A and M engineering is going to do the do they have stuff for us today or what are we doing with this? Didn't we have an engineer of record before? Right. So summon summit engineer is the engineer of record basically so they are the engineer for this project and others but they just we didn't have a second for the review after they were finished and then to sign off that they had reviewed those so it's similar to Bob Morley signs off on the maps yeah doesn't Bob Morley do usually that. usually sign off for us yeah for the for the survey part yes so he will still be signing off on the maps he will still be signing off? Yes. Bob Morley so will also. we have Anna Engineering and Bob Morley? Yes. Okay. Good afternoon, Commissioners, or good morning. Aaron Martinez, for the record. Uh, to answer your question, I don't have any kind of contract or proposal prepared for you because I was still a little unsure as to what my full solidified scope of work would be. I've been working with Kyla and uh, requesting um, some exhibits so that we could try to understand the methodology in which uh, they'd like to go about this process. Uh, we've been in contact with High Desert Engineering, Mr. Morley, uh, also uh, to get up, brought up to speed uh, on this. So after following this meeting, uh, we would come to you with a time and materials agreement to uh, address their uh, submittal as it comes to us and whatever documents they happen to, to give to us for submittal. So can we do anything with this? Yeah, I think we need to approve that. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure I'm understanding. Aaron. I'll make a motion that we uh, <clears throat> appoint Aaron Martinez of AM Engineering as the engineer of record for the Austin Realignment Project in conjunction with Summit Engineering. Okay. I'll second the motion. All right. So we have Art made the motion. Brian seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Judy, are you out there? Yeah, I vote nay. All right, very good. Moving forward. Um, for action item for Summit Engineering to provide a thorough update on all work previously accomplished on the Battle Mountain Levy Project and whether to continue to engage um, the services of Summit Engineering on the, this project. So, hey, Kathy, I have a, just a comment on this. I just, I'd like to ask uh, Summit if um, I see that we've been, we've been doing this with them for now about 10 years on this, on this uh, flood levy, and we've spent about uh, a little over a million dollars. I'd like to know, is, oh, is our engineering complete at this uh, point in time? What, what was the end of your sentence there, Brian? Sorry, this is, this is Anthony Newton with Summit for the record. I didn't hear your uh, question back. What? I, I, was, I just didn't hear the end of what you were asking there. Oh, your question now is, is all engineering complete on our uh, levy project? It's all engineering. Oh, all engineering. Yeah. Um, we're, we're, I mean, checking in with all of our subs and everything, 
Uh, our hydrologist reports that he's at 80% done on his baseline stuff. Um, we're estimating that we're about 90% done on the civil stuff. And then the environmental and the cultural end um, are estimating that they're at 95% done. So we're very near completion. Um, a, the biggest hurdle that we've we've had to work through since we were here last June talking to the commissioners um, is our, our hydrologist just wasn't um, as far along as he thought he was and uh, given the unique situation out there in the floodplain here with it uh, having barely any grade south to north um, and no river channelization. He's just ran into a lot of challenges with modeling the hydrology and hydraulics on that, mainly the hydraulics. So, um, yeah, that's where we're at. Uh, does that answer your question, Brian? Or do you want me to dive deeper in anything? No, I just, it's 10 years and a little over a million dollars. I don't know how the other commissioners feel about it, but we really, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty hefty amount for engineering costs and have nothing to show for it at this point. Um, for the record, this is Clint TC. Um, I've been involved with it since like two t 2012, this project. Um, Summit originally got hired to design the levee and what we, the plan was, was to take your existing levee uh, take a set of plans that had been done in like 2006 that was hired by uh, the Army Corps, I believe, and which basically bring that up to speed, and that was taking the existing levy and raising it. And it was only from Interstate 80 to the north. Um, in 2010, Lander County hired Summit to extend that levy to the south uh, to open up some more property, keeping it out of the floodplain on the south side of the freeway. We went through all the hydrology aspects and came up with preliminary designs. And about two years after we got going, we were informed that uh, the existing levy was controlled by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Even though Lander County is required to provide the right-of-way and maintain it, anything that happened on that levy needed Army Corps approval, at which point the Army Corps took over design of the project. Uh, they basically took all of our original work and just shelved it and started over. And if you recall, between 2012 and 2017, when supposedly the Army Corps generated some 2.4 million in design and absolutely had nothing to show for it. And at that time is when the Lander County decided not to move forward with the Army Corps, but rather move and design a new levy parallel to the existing levy so that we were we would not need we would only need minimal army corps approvals we've got a couple tie-ins to get culverts in where we're going to be encroaching and we still need a 408 permit on those areas and we needed the 404 permit because of wetlands but other than that, we've basically removed ourselves from the Army Corps jurisdiction. Um, and that was at the county's direction. So since 2018, 2019, 2020 is basically the new project, if that answers your question. Bert Ramos, thank you for the explanation. So, um, the one, the one issue that I see is I went back to 2010, read every minute up until today, um, and I've only found one contract, unless there's another one somewhere that was not 
discussed or I didn't or I missed the minutes, which could have happened. Um, so I think that we need to probably come back and it's for a phase one um, Battle Mountain Levy proposal um, for, for professional fees, and it was uh, January 31st of 2011 when that was when that was approved, and it was for 43,900 not to exceed. Um, that was for the phase one. Um, this has kind of taken a lot of loops and turns since then, as, as everybody knows, and it's been back and forth in front of the commission, and we've had some other review done on it. Um, so that's one concern that I have that I think the commission needs to be aware of, is that if we're going to proceed, we probably need to proceed with, with proper contracts. Um, or, I, like I said, I very well could have missed this. So if, if I did miss it, please, um, if you could provide it for us. Other thing that we don't have is the county doesn't ha seem to have a lot of um, documentation, whether that was misplaced, and we've had it from some of this whole time, we just misplaced it somewhere, but I can't find it. Um, so <clears throat> we brought you all the latest. I, I, I see that, and, I, and I'd appreciate it if we can keep all that. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> and so we left you the box to put it in. <laughs> perfect. <clears throat> I'll have it spread everywhere shortly. Um, so the, uh, the next thing is our, our, everything that we've designed to this point, is it? up to FEMA standards and meets FEMA standard? Um, we believe it is, yes. Obviously, FEMA is going to have to review it and confirm that they concur with us. Um, but our goal is to have a, a levy that can be certified to FEMA when we're done, and they accept it to remove uh, the majority of Battle Mountain from being in a zone A and move it to a shaded X, which is protected by the love. My understanding when, um, when Tom has been here on a couple times is that you folks are in contact with FEMA, though, regarding we, this. So it isn't yeah. like you present it at the end and say, what do you mm -hmm. think? I mean, you've been working with them right. all along, right? So, so we've been down to Oakland, I believe, three times our and uh, actually sat down and met with them and went through what the process was we were going through. Um, but when they get this package, the people we're talking to are administrators, this will all get sent to a consultant back in Maryland who's going to go through it with a fine-tooth comb. So. so I have a question. So on the bills that I have seen, how far I saw a bill for something like, is it right, am I correct? Correct me if I'm wrong, $760,000? Is that correct? Well, I can remember when so, Tom was before us and we made the decision to go with Summit and drop the Army Corps of Engineers. But what we can't find is the contract. I mean, Tom came in and said roughly what it would cost us and so forth and what we could do. And I can't believe we didn't do a contract, but that's what we can't seem to find. So we're looking at you folks saying, do you have a contract? Uh, we just did it all saying, okay, take it over and this is what we're going to do. And, um, so since 2011, we have paid over a million dollars and we had a get at out of forty three thousand nine hundred. Am I am I missing something somewhere? Well, and I'm not sure if there's somewhere there that there's some some time material things that have been adjusted. But so since two thousand and eleven, when when everything got approved, we're at one million ninety one thousand three hundred seventy eight dollars and five cents. Um, that's what we've paid Summit to date. Um, and. Today we, we get a bunch of the uh, the products so we can read through and see kind of where we stand. It looks like. So, um, correct me if I'm wrong. It's since 2011. I mean, this is the first time we're getting all of these documents. Are these were they were they who, who were they given to prior? Uh, previous documents. Uh, even our last meeting, we brought the plans with. We didn't bring the whole. Okay, and I, and I can respect that. And then yeah. we had asked also, I think Tom Gallagher was the one that was here before, and we asked, is that going to help with the flood insurance? So by helping, you know, and he at that point still said he didn't know that, that by changing those, we're going to even help 
with that. So we're uh, over a million dollars. We still don't have anything approved by FEMA. And so we, the way I'm looking at it, and correct me if I'm wrong, we have, we have these documents, as I respect, and I know it's a lot of work, but we have nothing dirt turned over, nothing done, and you're 90% down here, and you're 80% down here, and we still don't have anything. And I know that's a lot of work, and I'm not trying to under-justify people. No, yeah, Please yeah. don't look at yeah. it that way. Mm -hmm. That we have not a, a piece of dirt turned over, and we're, we've, or we're over a million dollars into it, where we still can't say if that's going to help Lander County and the flood insurance. So... Uh, that's where my big concern is, where are we going <laughs> I, don't, all of this money. I, I don't think that the construction company, the engineers can do anything about <clears throat> uh, a, an X zone is what we're trying to get mm -hmm. so that we can reduce or get rid of flood insurance in the area. Because I checked into this six years ago. I talked with insurance and insurance says it's up to who loans you the money. So it could be the bank, it could be insurance, but it's it's not the people that design and work on the levy. It's all up to other entities to, to make that decision. And we can get that levy bill and get nothing from it as far as reducing insurance, or we can get insurance reduced or you don't have to do it. So it's it's up to the banks. It's up to insurance. Well, are you? You're absolutely. Uh, this has been from day one. This has been this study project has been has been a sore for Lander County because there, he's absolutely right. There is no guarantee that's going to reduce flood insurance for people. And that's the whole reason why we've looked at this thing. It's just uh, I just I don't know. Honestly, I'm I'm questioning even continuing with the project. I mean, this is my opinion. Well, the, the whole thing is you're absolutely right as far as the final decision of when lending companies look at it. But if we don't give them something to work with, we're in an absolute floodplain. Right. And that's what we decided to do. So if we can move that over, and FEMA's the one that's going to give us the, the actual number or letter of where it's going to be, then at least the lending companies have something to look at, and hopefully we can reduce some of this. And that was the whole point behind it. And Patsy, you may be able to a answer this question. Could there be lenders that would lend money because we have the levy? It isn't that they would lend it because of that. It's, it's we're going to lend it, but where are we going to rate you? And that's where the underwriters make their decision of the rating. And the levy certainly is going to protect it and change our FEMA rating for sure somewhere, even though it still may be structured a floodplain, it won't be to the level that it is today. Okay. And so that's the whole point, and that's what we're working from. Um, so I guess, I guess with that said, I, I, it leads me to a few questions, because you, you touched on it, and I, and I just need to write this down. So you got the geotech. What percentage of that is done? I want to make sure so we I got, have all these percentages wrote down here. So we've got a geotech report there on the left that's uh, – that's a final draft. We've got um, we've got an operation and maintenance manual that's probably like a ninety percent draft. But I've been waiting on some stuff that we discussed for that in the <coughs> emergency action plan. So the emergency action plan is very rough draft right now because I've been waiting to see if you could find one for me. Okay. Remember our phone call. Yep. Um, that one's pretty rough. The environmental reports and the cultural resources obviously the cultural resources we can't see we can't share because that's all secretive cultural resources stuff so she's 95 she's saying she's 95 percent done on baseline so then, if we paid for it we should be able to see it though correct uh, it, it's all you national. will after it gets published yeah. probably but what happens is is the state um, historical people are concerned that if it's out in the public, somebody's going to go gotcha. out and steal the artifacts, even though they're just rusty beer cans, which yeah. that's their rules. So, so I couldn't provide you guys with any copies of hers. I instead had her type up like a memo of where she was at. That's included in there. And her map of that includes her area of study. So okay. that's what I could give you guys on that. The environmental, he, uh, SWCA has all of their reports in there, their environmental reports, their critical impact analysis, which was kind of a prelude to the environmental report to see what to expect out there. 
Uh, that's all in there in any supporting documents. So, so the environmental's done? Yep. Yeah. So cultural and environmental, I would say, is done. It's like 95%. Other than done. paperwork to follow. And, and, and yeah, filing for applications and, and getting permitting. And how is the working agreement with the railroad? Is it in place? We So Keith has executed that. The, the Keith executed that back in like April of last year. I, I have it in, in that folder. I have, okay. I have a Union Pacific Railroad folder with all that information. Um, they never signed it back because they wanted plans to be 100%. 100%. Okay. So without the contract, we have just been paying under T&M, is that right? Is that, so how, I would, is that how you're billing us? You know, I, I think... <laughs> well, I'm going to have to go back I think we need some more information <laughs> on this. I do think we need to, to look at some more and see where we are because what's happening is... Is we're, we're thinking the price is getting way too high. Of course, we need needed your update, which we appreciate, and we still need to go through this and some more minutes um, that I would like to see. And I'm sure Bert wants to go through where we are with um, with our maps and such. Um, but I do think um, we need to bring it back because we're, we're trying to rein in, and we're saying we think we just let you we we just let the rains go when you're riding off in the sunset. And we really want to know what's happening. So um, I think we should defer this. I have one more thing I'd like to. I've got a question for Patsy real quick. When you say the rate, do you mean the insurance rate or the interest rate on the loan? No. Um, the interest rate on the loan is one thing, but then they charge you additional for flood insurance. Right. Yes. Okay. So the so it could lower the rate if we have the levy. On absolutely, which. absolutely, because because you're mitigating. Okay, but on which? On the interest rate? No, not interest rate. Interest rate. rate. No, just flood insurance is all I'm talking about. Yeah, because they include that in the loan many times, right? Absolutely, especially if you're in a floodplain. Okay, so the rate that you're talking about is. Okay, instead of uh, two thousand dollars a year for your flood insurance, it might be five hundred or a thousand. Absolutely. Okay, now I got Absolutely, it. and that's all added and lumped in with your interest rates. So, okay. So uh, a, a homeowner would say, "Oh, I'm paying this much," and they're saying, "Well, that's because it includes flood insurance." Sometimes they look up the breakdown, and sometimes they don't. Okay. But the bottom line is the interest rate on your home would go down because it includes the flood insurance so rate. There is an economic benefit. Absolutely. Okay. So, so a couple more quick things. So on the you mentioned the 404 permit. Mm -hmm. What percentage of that is it's complete? No, that that's this that's what we're working towards. That's the whole point of this, getting the 408 in, which 404 yes. Yeah, 408 has to go in first, which is the right. permission to alter uh, federal work, which is the existing levy out there where we touch it, where we go back and forth between it. Okay. Again, that's a 170-day process is what they report. Um, we don't know how many iterations we're going to go through. We don't know how they're going to handle it because that stuff is so vague. Um, but we feel fairly confident that, I mean, they got to work with us. We're, we're benefiting the community here. Like, um, it's, it's ridiculous, but they make you jump through all these hoops. The 404 comes after the 408, which is the wetlands permitting, right? But um, we've got a preliminary letter on the 404 that... Preliminary approved. Right, that yeah. they concur with that's the wetlands that are de delineated. Yeah, okay. So that's, okay, that's I, I apologize. I'm just yeah. getting more clear that's on That's completed, on yeah. We just... Every, all the work is 95% done for to be able to submit for that. It's just that the 408 has to happen before the 408, which the 408 is more so them looking at construction plans. I'm sure our minutes are reflected at least a year ago that Tom said we had the 404, right? And we were going for the 408. Right. I, yeah, because I, I think, think, we, I think we need to review this. I think what he's this. saying, he meant was the, the work was done, but that final, once the 408's in place, then they can put their signature on the 404. Is what it amounts to. Will you gentlemen be able to stay after a little bit to go over the plans with our county manager yeah. Yeah. and our planning? Thank you. I have one last thing, and I'll be done. <laughs> one, one second, Judy. We'll, I'll give him just one second, okay? And, and this is just, just for clarification, because I'm not sure how this works, but 
do we build the levy prior to getting FEMA's signing off or is this or do we submit plans and then FEMA signs off on the plans then we can build the levy and potentially take them people out of the floodplain right so first what 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 we'll be going in for is called a CLOMAR it's a conditional letter of map revision mm -hmm. the once they once they approve all of our plans and our hydrology and our, our hydraulics and the levy itself what they will do is they'll issue this CLOMAR to us and s tell us that if you build it per these plans, we will modify the map. And then once the levee's built, an engineer has to certify that it was built in accordance with the plans and specs and certify that it's going to function. At that point, they'll modify the map. Okay. So, Judy, you want to go ahead? Yes, thank you. Um, kind of touching a little bit on what Patsy said, I remember the um, presentation that Tom had given, or, or you guys had come before us, um, talking about the 404 and the 408. Um, has the, the 404, okay, my understanding, it has been submitted? The pre-jurisdictional determination has been submitted and approved, which means that the envi our environmental sub has submitted his delineation of what they believe are wetlands <laughs> out, <laughs> out in the flat there, and the Army Corps is in agreement with that. So in other words, um, there's another route you can take, which is, uh, I, it slips my mind, but it's some other jurisdiction. Um, where if, if you go that route, then the Army Corps does its own study, which, as many of us know, could take forever with them. Um, and they may or may not come up with more or less wetlands. It's just... Okay, so, so the question is, the file has been submitted um, preliminary approval. So they're in agreement with what the wetlands are. But because okay. there's an existing so, levy out there... We have to go okay, through the... Okay, my question Okay. What I want to know is, when are we going to submit the file, and what is our timeline on that? Yeah. Do you want anything? Oh, yeah, go so, for yeah, so that's what I was uh, getting at. The last time we brought you guys that schedule, we did fall behind a little bit since we were here in June because of the issues I was just talking about with our hydrologists. Um, we should be able to submit the 408 uh, in a month or two. Is is I, I don't see any reason why we, we can't do that. So a month to two months, um, we should be able to have that in. And then once that's in, it's all, like I said, the 404 is next, and then the CLOMAR that Clint mentioned is a separate deal that is through FEMA, and the, that deals directly with the, the flood insurance rate maps. Anna Panola with Building Department. Well, wait a minute, Anna. I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm. Do we have a timeline? I mean, I, I understand yeah. you can't give us exact, you know, a month, two months, a year. What do you have a general timeline? I, I, we gave. That, I mean, last time we were here, we gave that project schedule. So I would just that that's still our best guess. It's just that we don't know how the permitting. It, they say 170 days. What is what does that mean? Like that dealing with the Army Corps that that could end up being a year. That could end up who knows. I, that's our point. Like we just we gave you best case scenario. Yes, everything's pushed back a month or two because of the issues we ran in here. Realistically, you're looking at construction in 2022 at this point. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So something that might be. To probably calm minds, a few every 90 days, you send in a small report that says what's going on, what's been rejected, what's passing. Yeah. Then we have uh, literally every 90 days and say this is what's gone on. They've told us we can't do this. They said we have to do that. So we have something to go off of, so we know what's being done because we can't see behind the scenes. Yeah, I think so that'd be a great idea. I think yeah. that I, you know, that that should be at a minimum done, so we know what's going on. Yeah. Um, and what where your guys' hands have been tied or haven't been. So, Anna, you want to go ahead? Yeah, Anna Panola with the building department and floodplain manager. Mm -hmm. I wanted to address Art's question. To get us out of A into X, 
that's the desire we want, you're out of the floodplain. And, inter and that what was so important about the ISO rating, went from an eight to a four, that affects flood insurance as well. So we need to keep going mm -hmm. with the whoever. It just, these rates are very important and it is the insurance and the lenders that look at that. So once our rates are in good standing and we're in X, that's and so then I agree, but I think that we have to, as a, you know, with, as a county, have to know where we're at. Oh no, I, I'm know, just explaining yeah. no, the no, rating no, yeah, and what it is, part. X and A and ISO. All that plays a big, big role in what we're trying to accomplish for the community. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So let me get this correct. Are we working with the Army Corps, or are we not? We we have to work with the Army Corps. For the past year, we haven't been able to get any response on the 408 because of that pending Bill. litigation going on. They refuse to work with us. So, but we have ceased we, our once we send something in, though, then we can let attorneys get on them. And, but. This whole, this whole, this whole last ten years, especially from. 2011 2017 have all been waste by the army corps 100 percent from 2011 to 2017 like clint said they spent two million three hundred eighty one thousand one hundred forty dollars and 22 cents on services that would have served 23 percent of the total project and had nothing to, to show for it so that 23 percent is them whittling away that alignment that he's talking about north of 80 all the way to uh, 806 Reese Street, whittling it down to 23% of that, not even the whole southern portion that we're including now. They spent seven years on that, spent over $2 million, million expected over a $1 million in payments from you guys, literally with nothing, absolutely nothing to show for it. And then in the past two and a half years, from that point moving forward, um, We've billed you guys around 630000 and we have all this work to show for it in two and a half years, as opposed to them spending 2.3 and wasting seven years of time. And even before that, before we were even involved. And, and they're still throwing hurdles in front of us. They don't want to work with us on the 408. So it, it's just, it's, it's been them this whole time. Our, our initial question to them was what they all wanted to see for plans to review these two encroachments on their existing dike, and they haven't given us an answer. But so one, of our, one of our questions was, if we can't find the contract, do you have the contract, or how are you billing us? Time and materials? I mean, this is what I'm asking, and you don't uh, know. So I'm saying, we have to look. This is what we're all considering. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion that we, um, we defer number 12, um, Summit Engineering, and our agenda item uh, for the next two weeks and put it back on. Made the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Judy says aye, but I do have a question. All right. Um, because the Army Corps is being a pain, would just throwing this out, out, would it be of any benefit to contact, uh, contact our um, representatives to see if they can? Or they get some leverage on the Army Corps to cooperate. Were you able to hear that? Mm -hmm. So, is it, would it um, benefit to contact the yeah. representative? There has been uh, contact with Mr. Amaday. I believe he's aware of the issues that are going on. Um, we actually have a letter that says from a general or whatever that says that his staff is going to cooperate, but we still haven't heard any response from him. So do we, um, would it behoove you to continually try to contact yeah. them on our behalf so we can get moving forward instead of letting them come to us that 
for we can do that would you please you yeah. know and then that would be in the 90 day re update that it's in there so but so we're going to table that so all then all in favor aye aye I thought we voted. Oh, I Aye. 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 Very good. So, she spoke, she got so we're all good to go. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Hey, that was in 2000. No, you can stay there. You're still on. In 2000. Hopefully not, because I don't know anything about us. No, we hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, Tom had asked us to. Uh, uh, sorry. Tom had asked us to table the next item um, okay. until next week, and they would be here to present okay. that. We, the county asked for those blueprints in 2016. Thank you for bringing them today. All right, guys, thank you very much. So, moving on. Thank you, Thank you. I'll be talking to you. <sighs> All right. So, discussion and update only from Kettleton and Christensen, independent contractor assisting Lander County Treasurer and the Lander County Fiscal Officer on updating the Lander County Financial. Oh, okay. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> All right. Scroll through it. Oh, with that. Okay, thank you. All right, so let me pull this up real quick. But real quick, I'm Marcus Arbuckle, and this is Ben Bailey. We're from Keddington and Christensen. Last year, we helped the county out um, correcting some issues in the accounting system. Um, we've also assisted with implementing, uh, moving the accounting records over to the, the Tyler ENCODE, the new accounting system. Um, since then, I'm happy to report that, you know, all transactions, revenue, and expenses are being recorded in a timely manner. Um, we're doing monthly bank reconciliations, you know, right, right as soon as we can after the month, and so... That, that's there to ensure that those transactions are being recorded properly. And over the last few months, we've been putting together a kind of a monthly financial packet. Um, the intent of it is so the commissioners can get this packet, the management department heads, and so you can review and kind of see what's going on on a month-to-month -month basis and compare the revenues and expenses to, um, to budget and so you can see how, how things are going. I mean, it's important for, um, you know, department heads to see their budget every month so they can see, okay, these, these are the revenues that have come in in my department. These are the expenses. You know, are there any errors? Do we need to, you know, look at the detail on certain areas? And just to kind of be able to stay on um, top of the financials and know, okay, exactly what's going on. And so just to kind of give everyone a better um, picture of, of the financial um, portion of the, the accounting. And so we've got the, the financial report, and I opened the wrong one. That, that was the, the year-end report. You don't expect them to see that, do you? <laughs> um, no, I'll, I'll make that bigger if I can blow that up, but, but my intent is to email this to, 
to you um, so you can have it every month and, and, and review that. But let's see, is there a way I can make that bigger? Oh, right here. Okay. And, I mean, Lander County, there's quite a bit going on in, in the county. And I, I mean, they're just kind of going over it briefly. There's um, 33 governmental funds. I mean, governmental funds are funded by, um, by taxes. And, and those types of funds pay for the, the ongoing services that the county provides. The county has three proprietary funds. Those are your enterprise funds. Um, the big ones are the water and the sewer. Proprietary funds are funded by, majority of them are funded by user fees, so the utility payments, and so that there's three of those. And then the county has about 16 um, fiduciary funds, and those are fund, those are money, assets, liabilities, revenues, and expenses that are not really part of Lander County, um, that they're holding the funds for other entities. Um, or they, they have the funds and other entities boards have to approve the, the spending of those monies. So in total, I mean, there's over 50, 50 funds that are part of the Lander County's accounting system. And so this financial report will, um, I mean, it, it gives a summary of, of each fund, um, but then it also has the, the detail. And so you can drill down into the detail if you want to look at it you know, in, in more detail. We, we do this type of um, thing for probably 15 to 18 different governmental entities that will um, come in and help do these um, month-end financial statements. Bank, I mean, each one's a little bit different. And um, so, so they typically the councils or the commissioners like to see these summaries so they can view things kind of at a higher level. But if they do want to drill down, they can um, know that the actual financial statements here are, are included in this report. Because um, some complaints that I, I would hear um, from other city councils is I, I'll get a financial presentation with a nice spreadsheet that tells me the numbers, but I can't ever trace that back to the actual accounting system to know that the accounting system matches up with, with the report that I'm giving. And so anytime we prepare these monthly reports, we like to show the actual financial statements so you can always refer back to those if you'd like. Um, okay, so jump into this real quick. Um, there's a page down. So how often is this report going to be generated for us, um, we, monthly? Yeah, we've been putting it together monthly for the last few months. Um, but I, I understand that you guys haven't been receiving that report. <laughs> and so, so we have been, been putting that together. Um, but I know there's been turnover in, uh, with employees that we've worked with in the past. Um, okay, so page down. So the first part of the report um, is the cash balances report. And so you can go through on this report and see um, it'll show the beginning balance. So that beginning balance would be the, the cash balance, at, you know, at the end of May. So the current balance would be the June 30th um, cash balance in, in each of those accounts. I mean, so the 001 is your general fund. Um, there's a few 002 um, accounts, but that's all part of the same fund. And so, so you'll have this report and be able to see the cash balances in, in each, of those, each of those funds. Um, you go down here, and it'll give you a sum, a, a sum of, the, of the current cash balance. Now, now that's the cash balance of all the governmental funds, all the enterprise funds, and all the fiduciary funds. Um, just quickly, uh, 173 million is governmental fund money, about 16.4 million is enterprise fund money, and then about 2 million makes up those fiduciary funds. Um, scroll down a little bit further and you can see where the, the cash is, what bank account or what investment account it's in. I know that's kind of small. Let me see if I can make that a little bigger. Um, Okay. 
Okay, so you can see, you know, there's the Wells Fargo, there's the LGIP investment accounts, there's the Wells investment, and so you can see where, what, what accounts the, the, the funds are in. So that, that's just the, the cash part of it. The, the next report is um, the accounts payable. So these are expenses that the county has incurred, but they haven't been paid out yet. And so this report will just show you, okay, what, what is in my accounts payable in each of the funds, you know, as, as of um, June 30th. And right now it's, it's just over $2 million. Um, the majority of it's in the governmental funds, about $1.4 million. Um, then there's a couple hundred thousand in the um, enterprise funds and about 400000 in those fiduciary funds. And so the total accounts payable um, is just over $2 million. Now, Now, with June financials, one thing I didn't bring up is June financials, the, these are, I call them preliminary financials for June. Um, June is different than every other month just because it's your year end, and you're receiving invoices in July and August that relate back to that old year. Um, since it's year end, I mean, you've got to wait till mid to late August before all those, you know, those invoices are coded into the system. This report was put together sometime mid to the end of July, and so th there's going to be some invoices that have come in since then that had to be coded back to June. And so about this time of year is when you start reconciling everything and getting it ready for the financial statement auditors. Um, because by this point, you know the invoices that are there. Um, there's also cash receipt. I mean, you've received the cash that you're going to get as of June 30th, but there's still um, revenues that come in in July and August that relate back to the old year. And so there's changes in your accounts receivable and your revenue and your accounts payable and your expenditures. And so, so that's what these are kind of preliminary and so now we're, we're working on, you know, working with, with the county on getting everything reconciled and all the schedules ready for the auditors. Um, so let's see, we're going to scroll down. That went a little too far. All right, so the next part of the report is this summary. Um, Okay, so here's the general fund, and let me blow that, make that a little bigger. Um, and so you can see, what you'll see every month is the current month actual in that first column on the left. Make that even a little bigger. And then you'll see a year-to-date actual, um, the current budget, and then the remaining on the budget. And then down here, there's a total revenue um, column. And um, so you can see where we're at. Okay, how are we doing compared to our budget? Um, there's the same thing on the expenditure side. So this is broken down by departments. So this is more for a high level. That you can say, okay, the treasurer's office, you know, year to date they spent 423,000. Their budget was 595,000. They're under budget by 172,000. So you can see that, you know, at a high level. Then over here you can see page 18. If you go down to page 18, um, Okay, so page 18, you can see the, the total of the treasure. There's the treasurer's department. Now, this is from the actual financial statements that are printed out of the, the Tyler accounting system. And so the total that, that we talked about was this 423. That's the total expenditures that's in that summary. And so you can go through and line by line and see, okay, this is how much was spent on salaries and 
postage or printing or whatever. You can just see the detail of that, and you can see the detail of the budget. And so, so that that that's just kind of how that works. Um, and so, you know, when, since I can't really see, yeah, <laughs> maybe we, some of you can. Um, I appreciate what you're saying. Just the highlights. Yeah. What what is going to be a little bit different for us? And if you just want to just highlight that for us. And tell me we're going to see this different, that different, yeah. like you're doing. Yep. And then don't worry about... Don't worry about showing you... Okay. That, because the particulars yeah. don't mean anything no, to me because yeah. I can't okay. put no, them in perspective. No, that's, that's good, good to know. So, so we'll get you these reports. Um, and so you can see them, look at them. Um, if you have questions, I mean, let us know or let Lake and know or Juicy. Um, and we can answer answer any questions but basically this summary just goes through every single fund there's there's approximately 50 funds and so you can see the revenues expenses compared to budget and so it's just there so you can you know monitor that type of thing and so department heads can do that as well so so that that's what that report is and <laughs> but thank you for your time I, I have a question. okay yeah uh, do you see your role here in Lander County as permanent or itinerary I mean, I mean, it really up to the county. We, we, we're, we, we do this sort of thing for about 18 other entities out there. Um, that and it, and each entity is a slightly different role. Some of them they just want us to come out and help at year end to get everything closed and ready for the um, for the auditors. Um, sometimes it, people want us to do the monthly bank reconciliation and. <laughs> do these monthly reports and and so and some people just want us quarterly or some you know call us when you need us type of thing or, or we'll help. so so we're flexible um, and so yeah just working with you know because I've uh, been with Keith and Cindy and, and Juicy and that that um, this was kind of the agreement we came up with and um, but but we're flex I mean we can do whatever the county needs um, so we're we're just here to help out and um, help, help where we can. So I mean, it's I guess up to the county. <laughs> but everything's been transferred over. We're all yeah. okay and and looking good. And yeah. These are yeah. new yeah. reports. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, things are going well. I mean, because we currently are doing the bank rec every single month. Um, so we're 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 doing that, putting these financials together, and then helping at year end. I mean, the because the auditors, I mean, just conflict of interest, they can't come in and help get the books ready and then audit it themselves. And so it, it needs to be ready to go and everything reconciled. Um, so I hope that answered your questions. Yeah. Well, but thank you very much. Yeah. So. I appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you. So we wanted this to uh, reflect some of Commissioner Allen's concerns were that, you know, showing as much as we can. We, this doesn't give a detail of what we did buy. Um, that can be, we can still come in there, but at least this all shows up on your guys' computer every month Would where you, you can go through. And, and then these guys can also answer any questions if, if you guys are concerned about something happening within an office um, that may not, and you want a third party that's neutral, mm -hmm. they can answer them questions for you as well. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Are we ready to move on to number 15? You do have to call a gentleman on that as well. All right. I'll go ahead and read it in and then um, for, uh, cast an update for Cassidy Associates Lobbyist for Lander County and Lander County Land Management and Conservation Act um, S.3456 HR6889. Ryan, how are you? This is Bert with Lander County. Uh, I have you on speaker here for the commission meeting. We're going to transfer you over. Could you just give me one second, Lander, and transfer to Kai first? You bet.
I'm here. Bert, are you there? Yes, we have you. Bert, this is uh, Ty Anderson. For the record, Ty Anderson, CEO at Cassidy and Associates. Is this coming through for the commissioners? Can you hear me okay? Yes. We can. All right. Well, first, thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, present email this morning. Uh, we have a couple of parts to our presentation. First, we would like to um, I'll provide a very brief introduction of the problem for those who don't know us. Uh, I'd like to a historical review of the work that we've done for the county since April of 2019. Um, you read into the record, I was listening on the line, so I heard you read into the record the two um, House and Senate bills that have been introduced on Lander County's behalf that we've been working on. We'll bring <clears throat> you up with a current status update on where those things stand and then talk about uh, the likely uh, forward plan from here. Uh, does that work as an agenda uh, for our presentation uh, for the commissioners? Yes. All right. Um, I will kick off then, and uh, please feel free to interrupt. Um, it's a little bit hard for me to hear you, but I'd be happy to answer questions as we go. So uh, with that in mind, um, Cassidy & Associates is a, an advocacy firm based in Washington, D.C., uh, we've been in existence since 1975. Uh, I have been at the firm now for uh, more than 15 years. Uh, the firm uh, has specialties in uh, defense and defense community work, uh, uh, public lands and conservation work, uh, Army Corps of Engineers work, not of the kind that Summit Engineering does, but in the uh, getting the Army Corps to move on uh, issues uh, uh, so uh, we do work for uh, universities and hospitals. So we have a, a broad range of practice, but um, uh, develop specialty in public lands and conservation matters, uh, substantial similarity with Nevada. And historically, our relationship with Lander County began uh, as a result of outreach from Frank Whitman, who at the time, I don't know if Frank was the head of the public lands uh, committee for the county or a member, but in any case, um, he contacted us about uh, the public land acquisition that the county was interested in doing, and um, uh, that led to us contracting with the county uh, April of, of 2019 to begin work on, on that effort. <clears throat> and as you know, or, or you may know, uh, but if not, I'll just uh, recapitulate a little bit here. The decision was made to try to uh, acquire certain parcels in Lander County uh, for the benefit of Lander County directly from the federal government, not through the administrative process with the Bureau of Land Management, uh, but through legislative means so that um, the time frame wouldn't be uh, as potentially full uh, as it might be working uh, piece by piece with the Bureau of Land Management. And so uh, for the first few months of our engagement, uh, say April to September or so, of 2019, we worked uh, with the county staff um, to outline uh, the component pieces of, of that bill uh, and started working on drafting of the legislation, socializing the, uh, the asks that would be made of the Nevada delegation, uh, Congressman Amade, uh, Senators Rosen and Cortez Masto, um, and set to drafting legislative language for that. Uh, in October of last year, uh, Lander County passed a resolution requesting uh, the land bill in question of the delegation. And um, so then at that point, our work shifted to uh, getting the bill introduced. Uh, Senator Rosen's staff uh, came to the county in November of 2019 to uh, visit some of the parcels in question. And... Um, over the winter of December, January, we finished up the technical and drafting uh, work. Part of that has included a back and forth as the county staff can attest with the federal land management agencies with respect to maps uh, that will delineate the, the land conveyances. And um, that was wrapped up in time, or at least the first draft was wrapped up in time for uh, the visit by county. 
county staff to Washington, D.C. In, in February, and well, uh, in, in March, preparations in February. Uh, it was actually some of the last in-person visits we had the opportunity to do on the Hill uh, prior to COVID and, and the sort of lockdown of, of the Capitol complex. Um, but the county manager and um, Ms. Bright, uh did visits with um, each of the relevant members of the Nevada delegation, and uh, the, the uh, Senate version of the bill was introduced shortly thereafter, and then the House version of the bill, well, I should step back, so the, the Senate version of the bill is just a straight-up Lander County bill by itself. Uh, Congressman Amaday included that same bill as, as one um, section of a larger Nevada, Northern Nevada lands bill, uh, that he that he has worked on and introduced, and that bill is um, tied to uh, directly. And I, I heard the conversation earlier with the, uh, the military folks. Um, the Northern Nevada Land Bill is is tied to the extension of the Fallon Naval Air Station land withdrawal, which obviously has a major impact uh, both economically and from a national security point, standpoint. Um, as well as a public land and public lands access standpoint. Um, so uh, Congressman Amaday included the Lander County Bill along with the Pershing County Land Bill as part of that overall um, land, and, uh, land withdrawal extension for the Fire Naval Air Station. Excuse me. And uh, those bills are, are now working their way through the legislative process. Um, I would say that in... Um, so the annual bill was introduced in May in advance of uh, the annual National uh, Defense Authorization Bill moving through the House of Representatives. Um, the, the so-called NDRA, the National Defense Authorization Bill, is a bill that has uh, maybe the only bill that has passed every single year for the last six decades. And so it is in the event that you can get a provision into it, uh, a very constructive vehicle for moving legislation, and that's um, some of the, that's a very uh, simple way of uh, explaining why Mr. Amaday included your bill in that effort. Um, the congressional back and forth related to uh, the NDA uh, culminated in July, um, and the uh, overall package that Mr. Amaday was trying to, uh, and it was not included in the, the House passed version. Uh, but interestingly, uh, President Trump's legislative office um, indicated that without resolution of that matter, uh, not Lander County specifically, but the, the bigger picture with respect to the Naval Air Station with uh, that they would recommend to the President that he veto the bill. Uh, <clears throat> the Going uh, story related to the, the defense authorization bill is that the House and the Senate will convene a conference committee. They've both passed uh, their respective versions of it at this point. They will convene a conference committee in September, and we anticipate that they will uh, have a resolution of the defense authorization bill in December of this year. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. With respect to the Senate version, um, I skipped over uh, lots of details here in an effort to, um, uh, uh, in respect for your time, but one of the efforts that we've had underway is a um, uh, analyzing a letter from Senators Cortez Masto and Rosen to the Committee of Jurisdiction, the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee, to get them to hold a hearing on the Lander County Land Bill. Uh, that letter went out uh, last month. And the Senate Energy Committee is slated to have a couple of hearings um, in September, uh, and we are pushing uh, to try to get the Lander County uh, land bill included in that, that slate of hearings. So there's sort of two paths forward, both of which we are pursuing, because it's, you, you sort of need to uh, go on red and bet on white here. Um, one is the defense authorization route, and the other is the traditional public lands bill route. And so, um, you know, obviously either one of those can work. Um, and, you know, part of our job is to make sure that any um, opportunity we are prepared for and 
uh, try to avail ourselves of. So uh, as we look forward, so that's, that's where things stand at the moment. Um, maybe I should pop in there for um, any questions. I realize that I just uh, tried to uh, you know, summarize uh, uh, 14, 15 months worth of work in, in less than 10 minutes. So I'm uh, almost necessarily going to have left something out. And if there was something that was unclear, uh, why don't we pause here for questions, and then I'll talk about the forward-going process uh, and prospects for you to know. So, all right. Um, all right, not any questions at this time, so we're going to go ahead and move on to uh, the possible. <laughs> so the, the uh, foregoing plan here, and I, I alluded to some of this already, um, Senate Energy Committee will have a couple of hearings in September uh, the 16th and the 23rd. Uh, we will continue to push to try to have the Lander County Bill included in, in those hearings. Um, at the same time, we are in um, in daily contact with uh, Congressman Dunley's office, his staff, uh, and uh, periodically with the, the Congressman himself, as he's been um, very, very uh, engaged and a great advocate for Lander County and all of Northern Nevada, frankly. Um, on an ongoing basis with respect to the defense authorization bill, and um, uh, with the hope that, uh, that the, the conference report, which is the piece of legislation that will uh, eventually be enacted into law, include the uh, Northern Nevada lands bill that has introduced by Mr. Amaday. One of the uh, key challenges in that regard is making sure that uh, we continue to underscore sort of the relationship and the positive relationship between uh, Lander County and the Navy um, and uh, that the uh, ongoing operation of, of the Fallen Naval Air Station does have impacts on the county and is, um, uh, although we are uh, obviously supportive of the military mission there, um, you know, the, the issue of Lander County's land holdings is germane to the overall uh, influence of the federal government within the county. Um, and so uh, we've been successful to date in uh, making that argument, and obviously that's why it is part of uh, Mr. Amadee's uh, legislative effort, uh, and we'll need to remain vigilant on that front. As I said, uh, the uh, conference committee will commence in mid-September uh, and should be wrapped up uh, by mid-December. Uh, that said, uh, the sort of staff level discussions are already have are already begun, and uh, so we have been engaged with the committees of jurisdiction, the House Armed Services and Senate Armed Services Committee on those, uh, as well as the committees that don't have direct jurisdiction but uh, have have sort of tangential relationships uh, through public lands related um, oversight. So the House Natural Resources Committee and the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee. Uh, so that's one path that uh, would lead to uh, passage in, in uh, December. Uh, if uh, instead uh, we end up headed in, a, in the public lands package direction, uh, there are sort of two uh, likely windows for resolution. The first would be uh, a resolution that happens at the end of the Congress. And I'm going to flag the sort of how does the end of the Congress work uh, uh, and come back to it in a second because it's different depending on the outcome of a presidential election. Um, and, you know, we, uh, I won't pretend to uh, uh, speculate as to the result of A, the presidential election, or B, uh, how things go after that uh, because that's a, that's a career limiting um, uh, uh, tricky territory. Uh, but I can tell you based on history, they're likely uh, different paths forward. So, uh, in any case, either the plans bill could come together at the end of the year in the lame duck session, so the time between the end of the, uh, well, after the election, between then and the end of the Congress, the lame duck session has, over the course of the past 20 years or so, had uh, 
three um, one of packages. Uh, and then, so that's uh, option A or option B, and it's happened in uh, negotiations far apart at the end of a Congress. Uh, often there will be a, a package early in the in the following Congress. Um, the last one was the last two have been uh, passed in February and March, respectively. Um, and you know, that that is a more likely outcome if uh, change of control of the White House were to occur. Either way, uh, as we have said from from day one, uh, you know, we, we try to we, we tailor our strategies to uh, whoever controls the House and the Senate and the White House. But uh, we're careful to make sure that we're never um, uh, trying to do something that requires a particular uh, political lay of the land, uh, because uh, as you all know, uh, things change uh, periodically on two, four, and six-year cycles, and so. Uh, we're pretty confident that, that we're going to cross the finish line here uh, by the end of the first quarter of next year. Um, but obviously, uh, there are caveats about um, timing and exact uh, path forward. So uh, I'll pause again there uh, for questions. Um, I'm sure that I've, uh, I've sent it out, or, or I would imagine some of this would be unclear, because not all of it, frankly, uh, makes sense if, if you are a rational thinker. Uh, Washington rarely does, uh, but I'd be happy to try to provide any uh, explanation. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, I, I have a question. Will you be willing to renegotiate your contract? Yes, uh, uh, manager, uh, I can't hear you. put this question to me directly uh, prior to this um, this call and. Let me step back. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the punchline now, which is yes, and then let me step back to the, the history uh, so that you have it in your head if that's, if that's helpful. Um, you know, when we, we started the project, we signed a one-year contract with a fixed retainer, and when we reached the end of that one-year uh, window in discussion with the county manager, we agreed to move forward on a month-to-month -month contract basis uh, at the same fee. And um, but that is that was done in part because you know again it's hard to to um, estimate the exact delivery time when you're working with the Congress. Uh, you know, listening in on the Army Corps conversation up there, uh, Congress is maybe not as bad as, as the Army Corps with respect with respect to predictability, but it's it's tricky. Uh, so we we just make our best guess, and but Bert um, you know pushed on that. Uh, issue uh, with me, and we're, we're happy to revisit um, and uh, provided uh, ahead of time um, a few different options. Um, the other thing I would say is, you know, we have had a very sort of narrow scope, and, uh, you know, I think we've delivered everything we've promised to deliver by way of, of uh, product and, and process along the way. I feel as though we may not have done a good job uh, communicating that to the, the board itself. Um, and I'll take responsibility for that and would welcome the opportunity to communicate in a more, um, more frequent basis. But um, in any case, we, in response to this inquiry on that point, um, we forwarded a couple of different options. And, you know, I think the other thing I would add is that there are, having, having listened to your uh, proceedings today, this morning, um, uh, you know, were our scope wider, or have we been um, asked to pay attention to some of the other things that you got in front of the commission in places we could be helpful? Um, for example, with Donnie Corps, we are not an engineering firm. Your folks at Summit have to do the actual work. I'm a geologist by training. I have a PhD in geology once upon a time, but uh, I'm not an engineer, nor a certified hydrogeologist. But, um, you know, one of the frustrations that I heard from the commission uh, in that conversation was related to the responsiveness of the Army Corps of Engineers. And, um, you know, that is uh, an area where our board has a specialty, one of our lead Republican lobbyists, um, was the Republican author of the last Water Resources Development Bill and uh, is well-connected to folks at the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, often in a situation like that, a, a couple of calls and so I one of the commissioners asked a good question about involving the delegation. And, you know, I'm sure Congressman Amaday is um, uh, likely helping on that front. 
you know, one thing that is helpful to members of Congress is having somebody else who can help at the staff level within the Army Corps. And again, we have uh, a group of folks that work on infrastructure-related matters, transportation, uh, flood control, et cetera, and have existing relationships there where, Brian? you know, we could potentially help. Again, Brian, uh, yeah. we wouldn't be in a position to have you write a permit, but oh, we could potentially on help make sure it gets an answer. Brian, can you hear me? We have a question. Brian? Yeah. Hey. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this is Commissioner Waits, and and I'm sorry, but I'm I'm not following you on everything. I feel like you're filibusting here for me. Um, can you just answer Commissioner Clark's question? Is this negotiable? Yes or no? Uh, yes, ma'am. And we we forwarded three different. Sorry, I mean, I'm maybe not... too early because I think we forwarded. Uh, Okay, I, paper to that effect. I understand all the rest that, that, you, that you're saying, and I understand when we started this that we were hoping it would take us maybe a year, a year or so. I think COVID has interacted with that. Um, I think in, with the $15,000 a month that not every month have you always had to do something to earn that. So we're asking where we are, we want to get done, but we want a handle on it. We just can't give you an open checkbook forever. So are you willing to negotiate? Yes? We well, understand the why. Yes, okay. Okay. And I'll, I'll, I wasn't uh, trying to dodge your question. I was, I, I was asking whether the, the proposals to that effect that we had uh, forwarded to the county had made it into your, your did, background you materials. Forward, Brian, who did you forward those to? Uh, the materials were forwarded to, to Bert and to the admin uh, as instructed. Hold on for us one second, because I don't think any of us have them. So that's where the issue, why we, I think the confusion is. So can you hold it on for a moment, please? Yeah, of course. Okay, we're, what we're going to do while we're looking, we're going to go ahead and take about a 10-minute break. So do you want to just hang on for about 10 minutes, or do you want us to call you back, or what would no. you like us to do? Because we got to look around. Ms. Right? Kathy, he did, he did board it to all three of us, to myself, Kyla, and oh, okay. uh, so, Caitlin. Right. Um, I'm just looking right now to see if I can spot it in the backup. Okay, so hold up. We have located them. We just don't have them in backup, so just bear with us a few minutes, please. Yes, please. No, 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 no. So to back up for the commission, um, when I spoke with Mr. Anderson, I asked him for a performance-based proposal, a uh, flat rate, and uh, and then if he if he wanted to add another, he could for the commission to see. And that's what that's what he forwarded us is a is a performance-based, and his flat stay with fifteen thousand a month, okay. and another one in. Okay. We neglected to put that in the backup. I apologize for that. Right. What I would like to do is I would like to have the DA's office review this and make a recommendation to us because on page three of five in their agreement, I do not like that any controversy will be settled in Washington, D.C. I don't like that at all. And I don't believe that this contract went through the DA's office because I don't think the DA would ever recommend a contract like this. Well, so. and we could have, yeah, because there could have been some negotiating things on that. Yeah. So, so I'm going to make a motion that we defer this until the DA has a time to review it and make a recommendation. Can I get a second? I'll you second. want to do a time frame on that at all? Well, yeah, you want to do a time frame. We could bring that to Well, meeting. I would hope that <laughs> by the second meeting in September we have a decision. Or did, were you able to hear us, Brian, by the second meeting in September? Yeah, uh, and, and commissioners, we're, we're, we, we have no issue with that at all. I think it was a standard contract. If, uh, you know, those legal provisions are problematic for any reason, and I would understand why you would prefer something else. We, no, we don't have no okay, issue with that. It's not even that. It's not, I'm going to cut you off right there. It's not that. What it was was an agreement that didn't go through our district attorney's office. And so with that amount... And, uh, it just needs to be, go through RDA and be reviewed. Um, so that's, I mean, that's not anything that 
You've done wrong or right. We just it needed to go through our DA's office before it was signed on this end. So, so my, my motion. I'd like to point out it didn't go it didn't go through the DA's office and it didn't go through the commission either, did it? No, it didn't. Okay, so I'm going to make a, a, I'm going to amend my motion to uh, we'll have the DA's office review this and make a recommendation. Hopefully by the end of the the second meeting in September. That give you enough time. All right, that is second. Huh? I'll second that. Oh. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, okay. very good. Thank you very much. We're going to take a five Thank minute. you. Thank you so much. We're going to take a five minute break, trip, folks. Thank you. We're going to have to do. Do I have to read it in still? Or just well, table it? This conference will now be recorded. Ted, are you there? You can just table it. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Okay. We have to just table okay. number 16. On number 16. Uh, we're going to table number 16 till the uh, DA can review it and hopefully be done by September 2nd meeting. Does it, and it doesn't have to be read anymore. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, you guys. And I'll second the motion, the amendment. No, no motion. No We're not motion. We're just, We're just tabling it. Table. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So we're going to move on to number 17. For possible action to approve, disapprove Lander County Economic Development Authority, LEDA, to move forward with Union Pacific with a high level engineering grade survey in the amount of $5,000 to designate the Lander County West Rail site as a Union Pacific focused site railroad spur and um, for the funds to be used for the industrial park budget line items. So, all right, folks, you are up. Monica Sill, Lander Economic, Economic Development Authority Chair. And I'm Sheila Mudd, the Director for the Northeastern Nevada Regional Development Authority. So um, <clears throat> coming before you today to talk about the potential of uh, this rail park and really what the next steps could be. Uh, we've talked in the past a little bit about industrial parks in the Lander area and one thing I had mentioned and I, and I continue to is that when there are private sector industrial parks in town uh, government certainly doesn't want to compete with that. The only time that government gets involved in the industrial park world is when there's a gap that's not being met by, um, uh, by the private sector. And so one of those that uh, Lita identified, and, and we certainly agree, and I'll go into the numbers a little bit in regards to that, is this access to the rail line. Here in Lander County, we currently don't have um, a, an industrial park or or uh, an area that uh, is specifically that can specifically access the rail line. Uh, there's some private stuff out there that's not necessarily on the market, so it makes it hard to uh, to market that and promote it. So uh, there's that 200 and I think 30 or 260 some odd acres out west of town that has been brought up uh, as being a potential rail park. And so really, I'm here just to say. If we want to give that the green light and move forward with it on a county level, here's here's the next steps. And so, um, the uh, one of the concerns about that was really just putting a, a pile of cash into a, a property that we don't know if we can get anybody into. But I think we can demonstrate kind of a phased approach here that uh, you know I would certainly encourage the county to consider. But uh, just so you know, a few of the numbers, since I've been with NNRDA, we've gotten uh, 41 project leads. And when I say that, it doesn't sound like a lot maybe in, in a couple years. But these are people who have come to us and say, we're interested in expansion, we're interested in relocation, here's how much money we want to spend, and here's how many employees we're going to bring. So these are solid, what I'd call solid leads. Of those 14 have required rail access, they said, if you don't give us a property that we can access the rail directly, we're not interested. So 34%. Uh, if you ask me, that's a pretty big number. Those are, uh, those are companies we just do not, in Lander County, don't have 
uh, an option to, to provide uh, anything for. Of those, 12 of them have been manufacturers, and nine of them were independent of mining. They had absolutely nothing to do with mining. So uh, that kind of ticks our diversification box. Uh, what does that equate to of those 12? Over 5,000 jobs they were offering and uh, $2.8 billion. So those are jobs and dollars that we simply have no option to, to, to take a shot at. We're not contenders. So uh, that's what we're kind of missing out on. So if you guys decide to, to, to throw the green light on that property out there so that we can have a rail access property, here's kind of what my little phased approach would look like. Let's say today you say, yep, let's shoot for it. What we can do that do is we can get it on the um, Union Pacific Site Solution Tool, which I'll show you what that looks like. But essentially it's a map that says here's a property. It's right up next to the rail, and uh, when companies are looking for properties next to the rail, this is one of the sites they go to. And we could do that you know, within a few days. Uh, that would be kind of the first step. Second step is what we're talking about on the agenda today is this a developmental concept. So for between five and about ten thousand uh, dollars, you can hire a contractor. Uh, of course, Union Pacific has a, a huge um, repository of these contractors they've worked with in the past who do who do high level engineering, grade surveys, etc., just to see if that property really is a contender for um, for a rail park. Once that's been done and submitted to UP, and one thing, and I've talked to them several, on several occasions about this, one thing they've said is that the biggest thing is can you get utilities out there within 18 months? That's, that's, that's a big factor as well. And what it boils down to is if we can demonstrate that, that we can do that as a county, then what they do is they get an approval on it, and then they put it on what, one of their focus sites. And this is kind of their upper echelon of, of sites across the country. And this is where UP markets Lander County or markets whoever's on that focus site and says, when, when companies come to them and say, where are the properties you have that are ready to go, uh, they, give them, they give them these focus sites. And so, so between, five for, between five and ten grand, we can get on this focus site and be marketed you know, at a national level and certainly something an NRDA could market as well. This would be, if, if Lander so chooses, this would be the only, at the moment the only focus site in our region. And there's only one other in northern Nevada, and I'll, I'll show you that one uh, here, um, here shortly. What this does is at this point, it's a minimum investment, but it brings customers to the table. And I think that was the commission's concern before is, what, you know, when are we going to get a company? When are we going to get a customer that can come in here? And I think that that's fair. Um, like I've said, as a resident of Lander County, that's what I would want. That's what I would want the commission to say. But this brings the customers to the table where we can then start negotiating um, what it would take to actually get them uh, onto the site. And so just assuming that Lander County took the full burden of this, uh, this is what it would look like. The next step would be this comprehensive engineering that would include this design review, signal design, construction. You know, it's a big engineering package. Uh, uh, UP indicated you're looking at approximately $300,000 to get that and then of course for the next step being construction and for that site based off some real preliminary views of it uh, that I sent to UP you know they said that uh, you know roughly two million might get something in there but this is just assuming Lander took on the whole the whole kit and caboodle. Um, I would recommend we wait for a customer and start talking about cost sharing and what they're really looking for because those they might come in and say, well, we don't like the track right here. We want it to go this way and do this and that. And that's really what you want is you want to be able to customize these things. So this gives you an idea just kind of what the phased approach looks like. And I would certainly encourage that the county move forward at least with this uh, phase to get uh, – a site on on one of these UP focus sites so that it can begin uh, being marketed. Um, just to give you an idea what some of this looks like, this is the site solutions tool and you can see that big void in northeastern Nevada. Uh, there's just not anything there and so we could do that today like I say if uh, if uh, Lander you know promoted it and gave it the green light. Um, this here is kind of what the focus sites look like. So you can see, you, know, you might be able to see. Um, 
I'm sorry about that. But uh, this is what the focus sites look like, and there's a list. There's Buckeye, Arizona, Cassie Grande, Arizona. You keep going down. And actually, we have one there in northern Nevada. Um, but you can see those blue dots. There's this big void on the Great Basin. And so if Lander County decide to move forward with this, you know, we could get our dot there. But anyways, the only other um, focus site in northern Nevada is this one in Hazen at Churchill County. And I just uh, talked to uh, the UP yesterday who indicated that this is essentially being considered as not a very good focus site because they can't get those utilities there like, like I had mentioned. And so they're kind of they're wondering whether or not this should even be on there. So... Um, what I would like to see is a couple of these uh, strung out through through the I-80 corridor along um, along our region, and uh, it'd be pretty cool if Lander County led the way with that. So, uh, once again, between five and ten grand to get this on here, so long as we can guarantee uh, utilities, you know, in in there, or you know, that it's possible. That's really the, the kicker. All right, so um, these were some of the cost estimates that the LIDA committee came up with as far, and it, I know a lot of you guys were, were involved in this. Um, I think, Bert, I think you, your, your team provided some of these numbers and so forth. Uh, it gives us something to kind of run with. So total cost estimates for utilities going in there and rail, et cetera. Um, I think we've got that total at around $11 million. I, I don't think the county should fit that whole bill. <laughs> I think that's crazy, but like I've said. But it just, it just tells us kind of what we're dealing with. Um, and if a company were to come in, how you would incentivize that. Um, this is a, what I call a project um, a review uh, revenue calculator. This is something that I came up with, and I would definitely – encourage the county treasurer's office to consider it. I know this is pretty tough to see, but what this is, is we put in the variables. How much in a capital investments a company bringing? Um, how much are they gonna spend every year? Are they gonna construct new um, or buy? How much equipment are they gonna bring to the table? I even put variables in there. How much of the materials are gonna come from Lander County, construction materials, compared to how much is coming from outside of the county? Um, what are the employees going to bring as far as tax revenue goes? So we stick in how many employees, what they're making, how many, much, how many goods are coming from within Lander County compared to that that's coming out. And so uh, this kind of gives us an idea of what we have um, to play with. And I think this one, this is actually a project that we submitted for Lander County recently called Project Molten. They were going to bring a $100 million capital investment. Um, and 150 employees and as a result our overall impact here our annual impact looks at about a million dollars a year if they were to bring those kind of numbers to the county so it gives you something to work with to know kind of what the revenue looks like and how how you know how long it take to to uh, pay off something like this so um, we've got these business recruitment scenarios um, so we had a project we submitted for Lander County called Project Thermo, and if that came into town, this was about a $10 million capital investment with 33 employees. Uh, as you can see, I'll just get to the bottom line there. To uh, pay that off, for them to be able to pay that off, an $11 million investment, it takes 61 years. So those are probably not the type of companies we're looking for out here in Lander County. Now, if you brought 10 of them to the table at the same time, then, uh, then you might have something to mess with. So we're looking for something just a little bit bigger than that. We've got some incentive scenarios here that, uh, that you can put forth if you, uh, you know, required a certain amount for a lease. Uh, this is something that we would have to plug these variables in together, at, you know, as a commission and as a team and, and, uh, and figure out what you would offer these companies uh, for cost-sharing uh, purposes. Uh, but as you can see here with this incentive scenario, if we gave them a five-year, $1 per year lease, and then after that, you know, leased it out at half a dollar a square foot for 15 acres, you know, then you're cutting your payoff time significantly. But something like this, you'd have to have two or three companies in there for it to, to pay off. Now, this Project Molten that I mentioned right here, they're bringing in enough annual projected annual revenue that you know after five years of successful operation it might be a situation where you just turn over the the property as long as they'll stay there you know for the next 15 years or something like that and of course we would see um, it only take about eight years to pay off eight million and then everything after that is gravy so 
you know, when we get to that point, that would be like your phase three, but when you get to that point, we'd have to have those conversations. As different variables change, you have to adjust times, adjust investment, adjust lease rates, and all of those kind of things. And that was it. Thank after you. that, after that last line item, I just wanted to kind of get through this quick for you guys. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate it. It is. We we love your statistics and projections, and um, it's all exciting when we look at economic growth by all means. So thank you so much. Um, it, you certainly can't compare it to the the five or ten thousand that we just gave to do a rodeo for a day. <laughs> so when we're looking at our future, there isn't any way that we can't say we have to look at it. Um, it's, it's just imperative, it's what we have to do. So I will make a motion that we approve the Lander County Economic Development Authority uh, to move forward with the Union Pacific with a high level engineering, high level, I love that, versus a low level. <laughs> Engineering grade survey in the amount of um, anywhere from 5000 to 10000 Yeah, I'd cap it at ten. Be to designate safe. the Lander County West Trail site as a Union Pacific focus site or a railroad spur. And the funds are um, going to be coming from the industrial park budgeted line item. Well, you better ask it. Um, well, because it doesn't say 10000 it says 5000 We can 000. only give up to 5 So we can only go up to 5 because the agenda says 5 I can't go more than five? No. You can come back and ask for another five. If you In the can. amount of 5000 Okay. All right. That's not negotiable, huh? No. Okay, then my, uh, my motion is amended to read 5000 even though it may be more. So um, right now you've got 5000 <laughs> and uh, if we pass that, then you need more, come back. All right, do I have a second? Randy, you got something? Questions. One is, uh, is this piece of property in a floodplain? My name is Randy Clark, and uh, one question I have is, this piece of property we're going to put a spur on, is it in a floodplain? Is it in the Reese River floodplain? Well, that's a good question. Thank you. Yes, uh, part of it is, Kyla Bright, or Sharp for the record. Um, yes, part of it is, but that's not included in the in the area right up against the piece of land. But the, but the people that would be working off the spur will be in a floodplain? No. They won't be? No. Oh. Not in the area right up against the the rail there. There's about a 230-acre area that's out of the floodplain. Flood oh, okay. right. And then anything behind that, closer to the mountain, is in the floodplain. Okay. Another question is, how many of these people that you had proposed, did they go to Elko for their spur? Did we, did we lose any of these to Elko? No, because... Did they develop an Elko, or where'd they go? Yeah, no, I, some of them we just don't know. They, they mm -hmm. may have just decided not to, to move on it, but uh, Elko's full. Well, they're, yeah, they're so, I mean, they're full. if they're going to, if they're going to, if, if the Elko Regional Rail Park is going to get another tenant in there, they actually have to put it on the south side, which is where the marsh area is, and they've got a lot to deal with there. Um, so, yeah, the... the I can't put a single person in in uh, in the Elko Regional one because it's full. So uh, and and and, that, and you know, Mr. Clark brings up a good a good point there. Um, right now, like I said, through like our six county region, we have one rail spur accessing the rail in the whole region that is tentatively available. And I say that because it's not on the market, it's privately owned, and those private owners have said, um, yeah, we'll entertain an offer, but that's really it. Now, here's the fortunate thing for Lander County. That spur is in Lander County. So, you know, I think that's important to know that as well. Okay. So do we have a second? I'll second. Uh -huh. All in favor? Aye. 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 Pat, uh, Judy, I'm sorry, what did you say? Aye. All right. Opposed? No, I'll vote aye. All right. All right. So, so moving forward, Patsy uh, made the motion and um, Kathy seconded it. All right. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Moving on to number eight. Yeah. So, 
For the record, Randy Clark is not related to me. <laughs> He's my brother from an ugly mother. <laughs> but I came out being the best looking brother. <laughs> All right, so for possible action to approve, disapprove a parcel map application for Randy the Clark Family Trust, located on Trevor Lane in Battle Mountain, APN 011-060-13, zone industrial M, changing one parcel into four parcels, PAR B1-43-564-2, um, square feet, PAR B2-43-531 square feet, PAR um, B3-43-561 comma um, five six one square feet or four four three comma five six one square feet. This item was approved by um, was approved with two conditions by the Planning Commission on August nineteenth to include the signatures of the utility um, companies and Lambert County Water and Sewer as well as the owner will not be putting in septic but will have to connect to municipal water and sewer. All right. You guys are on. That's an industrial park out there, right? Correct. Uh, Not in a floodplain. No rail spur. No, I'll maybe we should put the rail out to there. There I'll, you go. A good idea. I'll make a motion that we approve the parcel map uh, for the Clark Family Trust located on Chucker Lane in Battle Mountain with all the fi facts and figures presented. Uh, <laughs> Second. All right, for a second. I'll second that. That would the facts and figures were the conditions of the planning committee, right? Yes, that's what the conditions were approved. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So. All right. Art made the motion. Happy second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, very good. All right. For possible action to approve, disapprove, parcel map. Application for Clark Family Trust located on Quail Run in Battle Mountain, APN 011-060-18 Zones General, Commercial District C2, and Industrial M, changing one parcel into four parcels, PAR 3A, four acres, PAR 3B, three acres, PAR 3C, two acres, and PAR R. 3D, 43,571 square feet. This item was approved with two conditions by the Planning Commission on August 19, 2020, to include the signatures of the utility company and Lander County Water and Sewer, as well as the owners will not be putting in septic, but will, be, will have to connect to municipal water and sewer. I'll make a motion that we approve the parcel map application for the Clark Family Trust located on Quail Run in Battle Mountain. All the numbers read in already um, with the conditions to be followed with the Planning Commission's recommendation. All right, a second. I'll second the motion. All right. Motion was made by, or second by Patsy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Possible action to approve this approved a parcel map application for Clark Family Trust located on Sage Hen in Battle Mountain, APN 011-060-19, zoned single family residential slash manufactured housing overlay R-1 dash or slash MO, changing one parcel into four parcels, par 4A 5.73 acres. Part 4B, 21, comma, 0, excuse me, 21, comma, 808 square feet. Part 4C, 5.73 acres. Part 4D, 21, comma, 808 square feet. This item was approved with two conditions by the Planning Commission on August 19, 2020, to include the signatures of the utility company and Lander County Water and Sewer, as well as the um, owner will not be putting in septic, but will have to connect to municipal water and sewer. Now I'll make a motion that we 
approve the parcel map application for Clark Family Trust located on Sage and in Battle Mountain with all the particulars read in and the uh, owner must follow the Planning Commission uh, requirements. All right, can I get a second? I'll second the motion. All right. Art made the motion. Have to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. For possible action to approve, disapprove, or reverse reversion um, to acreage application for Colt. Oh, that's not right. Colt and Amy here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are they here? Or are you speaking for? Oh, they're on the phone. Okay. We'll just go ahead and do it. I'll make the motion. But it's not okay, I'll just go. I'm going to go ahead and read it in. All right. Start. I'll start over. For possible action to approve, disapprove the reversion of acreage application for Colt and Amy Nelson, located 645 North First Street in Battle Mountain, APN 002-082-08 and APN 002-082. 082-09 zoned MRC merging two parcels into one. This item was approved by the Planning Commission on August 19, 2020. So I have a motion. Yeah, I, I just have a question first. Um, they split, they, they, when they bought it, it was already split because that used to be Wells Fargo over there on the corner. Okay, now they're just putting it back. Okay, now I got it. Okay, I'll make a motion that we uh, <coughs> approve the application for Colton Amy Nelson, located at 645 North 1st Street in Battle Mountain. The uh, numbers and letters read into the record. All right, can I get a uh, second? I'll second the motion. All right, Art made the motion. Happy second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, very good. Moving on. Correspondence reports future agenda items. I've, I've got one, Bert, for the future. <clears throat> and, and this is a question that I have in my mind about the 2477 roads. Way out on Hilltop, that's a county road going through the canyon. I don't want to get in a situation with the 2477 roads that you cannot shoot from or across these two tracks and these old dirt roads. So we need to check into that because I heard that there was a problem with somebody up in Hilltop Canyon. They got out of their truck and they shot across the road and they got cited for it. I don't want to have those kinds of problems. I, I believe Mr. Unger may speak on it, but I believe if it's a county road that you cannot discharge your firearm. You want to come up here I don't. please, Sheriff Unger? No. <laughs> Too bad. Too bad. <laughs> uh, how, how would that work, Ron? If we if we take these two four seven seven roads that aren't county roads, if we take them over, are they now county roads? And I'm ten miles from town, and I can't step out of my truck and shoot across it. Well, I can't answer that whether they're county or not. But what that does mean is that it's pretty much for the. Uh, Ron, for the record, but you had to allow access to the public. That was a lot of it. Now, as far as shooting over, uh, it won't be my deputies that are citing it would be oh, fish and game. But yeah. if you were out on those two track roads, and yeah, there is a law, you can't shoot across these roads, but it's county roads, like going out to the Tamara Ranch. You know, you <laughs> jump out of your truck and you're going to shoot across that road, that's not a good thing. So right. where I'm going with, but if you're up in a canyon on a two track, and you get out of the passenger side and shoot up here 100 yards on the left side of the road, that could be classified as well, shooting across the road. You know, the example I gave, I'm up in Hilltop Canyon, that's County Road. Right. And I jump out, I'm miles away from everybody, I'm by myself, I can't jump out and shoot across that because somebody may sight me. I've heard that that's happened it, That could recently. happen, Mark. So it is a law, so that's the discretion. Yeah, so that's my that's my question on that. But I would like to move ahead with the two four seven seven project. Um, if we have to hire somebody to do it, look around and, and see what that would cost because this is a lot for Kyla to 
to take on with her other responsibilities, and I'd be willing to pay somebody to come in and, and get it done so that we don't miss any opportunities. Can I, can I comment? We, we will put that on the agenda. This is Judy. I'd like to comment. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I know um, previously I talked to uh, Keith about it, and my county um, basically um, kind of wrote the program on um, going through and, and recognizing 244 or uh, 2477 roads uh, and adopting them. Uh, since then, there have been other counties that have used the, the program and the services of um, whatever firm they've used, and it's getting cheaper. I can't remember exactly what Commissioner Whitman from Nye had told me cost-wise, but that's a really good start is to get a hold of um, Melinda Whitman at, at Nye County to get some information from her on where to, you know, kind of start and, and who to contact about that. Um, just a, a recommendation on that. Six years ago, I brought the Nye County plan to Lander County. It was given to Jan Morrison. Jan Morrison left. It was lost. It was found again. And we haven't gotten much done. So we do have the template from Nye County to follow. But we, ne we need to get this rolling. Okay, well, and that's, yeah, good. It's, like I said, I know there's, there's firms out there that will do it also. And so there's another recommendation, too. But anyway, um, I agree. It, uh, it needs to be done, but I don't then again, on the other hand, this, we do Judy, but it, we'll put it on the agenda we'll, for we'll discussion. We'll put it back on the agenda. Okay, that's fine. Thanks. So then, one thing I would like to see is um, contracts brought back that have been signed that haven't gone through the district attorney's office. If you come, whenever that you come across them, or if we can search all of our contracts that we have to wear aware of, so you know that just to double check them, please. After our experience from today. Yeah, can we do it as they as as they come to renew? It makes yeah. it easier because there's a lot of minutes and stuff that go okay. to reading. No, that's it, would, fine. would that be okay? Well, and that's fine as long as you don't come across one that has been signed that's outrageous like this one. Everything I find will come back for you. Very good. Thanks. Yeah, this was uh, quite a surprise that when I found that paragraph that everything, anything, had to be run through uh, courts in Washington D.C. I'm, I'm not signing anything like that. I also would like on the agenda our holiday schedule. What is that? The holiday schedule. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was thinking about that too. And are we bringing back the Austin? Are we bringing back the Austin one too that we tabled? Help me With Summit Engineering? Oh, yes. Yes, both of summits will be back okay. on. Yep, they were both asked to be back on the next agenda. All right, very good. So I have a motion, a motion to adjourn. No public comment. Oh, go ahead. Do we have any public comment? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Aye. Oh, I'm favor. Aye. Thank you guys. This conference is no longer being recorded.